we are good to go. Good evening, everybody. Thank you very much for joining us. Let us know, as always, with these live streams. We do sometimes have technical issues. If you are watching these live, please let us know that you can hear us and you can see us okay. Uh, Rob's joining me tonight. And Pete. Hello. We're going to be showing you three-player Tainted Grail, Kings of Ruin. This is going to be a tutorial and playthrough. I'm going to give you a little bit of an overview at the start, but then I'm going to be explaining the rules as we go. We've got a few things to talk about before we actually start playing. Thank you very much for letting me know that the sound is okay. First of all, this is a sponsored video, so a big thank you to Awaken Realms uh, for sponsoring me to create this video. That does mean you're not going to get any opinions from us about the game in this video. So there's not going to be any review of the game. You will probably see us enjoying the game, but yeah, you're not going to get any actual opinions from us in this video. That's the first thing to mention. The second thing is, this is a narrative driven campaign game. It's going to be very difficult for you to watch this video without any spoilers. We are going to be playing through chapter one tonight. We're going to be playing for about three hours. If we finish chapter one before that, fine. If it gets to 11 o'clock at night and I'm falling asleep and we're still only halfway through chapter one, we might end up having to call it early. But I've had it on good authority that chapter one should take us about two and a half to three hours, depending on how much deliberation we do and arguing about whether to go left or right. Now, I say you're not going to avoid any spoilers. The thing with this game is any time we are reading from this big exploration book here, that is going to be a spoiler. And any time Pete reads one of the events from the event cards, that's also going to be a spoiler. But what I'm going to do is, and this isn't going to be a benefit if you're watching this live, but if you're watching this video back later, I am going to put some timestamps in this video so that if you want to see how combat works, you can skip forward to the combat section. And in fact, you can actually watch a combat play out without getting any spoilers about the story. And the same with the diplomacy. So if you're watching this video back afterwards and you haven't switched off already because of spoilers, then it will be obvious when we are going to be doing spoilers and you can just skip past those bits. Uh, and as I say, if you want to learn how combat works, there will be a timestamp in the video. And if you want to learn how diplomacy works, there'll be a timestamp in the video as well. I hope we're going to get all of the rules right tonight. But if you're watching this video live and you spot that we do make some kind of mistake, please let us know in the chat and we will fix it as we are playing. If you are watching this video back afterwards and you realize that we've made a mistake with something, please let me know in the comments and I will add some Klingon subtitles into this video. So if you're watching this video back afterwards, turn on the subtitles, change them to the Klingon channel and then any errors that we do pick up after the video has finished, uh, I'll put those annotations in there because this is a sponsored video. My job today is to show you how this game plays to either teach you how to play the game if you've got it coming and you want to learn how to play or to see if it's a game that is of interest to you. I suspect what some people might do is they might play through chapter one themselves and then come back, watch this video just to check that they're playing by the correct rules. Right then, that's all of that stuff out of the way. So what is Tainted Grail? Tainty Grail is a one to four player cooperative narrative driven board game experience which sets you uh, in the world, a fantastical world that mixes Arthurian legends with weird stuff. I'll just say weird stuff and leave it at that. <laughs> it's very weird stuff. Um, Kings of Ruin is actually, I don't know whether to call it the second game in the Tainted Grail series because the original game, Tainted Grail, came out in 2019 and consisted of three campaign, well, four campaigns, Fall of Avalon, which was the base game, Age of Legends, The Last Night, I think it was The Last Night, uh, and then there's the Red Death campaign. All of those four campaigns are all based on the original rule set. This version of Tainted Grail is not an expansion. This is a standalone game. And although 95% of the game is the same, the 5% that is different has fixed pretty much all of people's criticisms about the original game, which was there was too much grind, it was too difficult, and it was too slow. And having played through a little bit of this game myself, I can confirm that those issues are either completely gone or mostly gone. There is still a tiny little bit of it, because without it, there isn't a game. But yeah, it's far less punishing than it was in the original game. And you will see that tonight. In fact, whenever we get to a point in the explanation where I remember it being different from the original, I'll, I'll try and highlight that, which may be confusing for you if you don't know the original. But if you do know the original, it'll be useful to know where it's different. 
So the setting of this game, there is a flavor intro. There's a lot of narrative to read. Uh, and I was actually going to skip the original bit of narrative. But quick summary is we all lived in this land where everything was great. And then unfortunately, the plague came along as it does. So King Arthur uh, set off for the distant land of Avalon uh, in the hope of basically founding a new home for all of the people to get away from the Red Death, which is the plague that was sweeping our lands. And they found that. They found this place called Avalon. Unfortunately, the boats that we were on got separated from the main fleet, and we've actually uh, got shipwrecked on the western side of the island. So this campaign, Kings of Ruin, is actually set, I believe, at the same time as the original Fall of Avalon campaign, but we are on the west side of the island and there are stories about King Arthur. He's, he's over there, but he's not part of this particular thing. Each character actually has their own uh, little introduction to the game and everybody starts with a map. Now, this is a, a rough map, which is a rough layout. It actually says that this is a, a, real, a realistic map of the time. In other words, it might not be accurate. Um, it, it will just give you a rough idea of where it is and we're actually going to start the campaign in the shunned lands which is here um and this is basically the world that we will have to explore so yes we get we get one of those let's move that off to one side right the characters that we've chosen to play there are four characters included in the game i have chosen to play elgin who is a candle maker um and i well, yeah, I'm I'm more about the diplomacy side of things than the combat side of things. We'll go into the character boards in a little bit later on. Pete, you've chosen to play Girdwin. I'm not quite so diplomatic <laughs> as, as Elgan. Um, I tend to do my diplomacy with a crossbow. Yeah, you're pretty good with a crossbow, Bolt. Uh, and we've also met up with a strange dwarf with brightly coloured clothing. So, yeah. Rob, you're playing Osbert. Interesting shit, yeah, yeah. So I, I seem to specialise in handcraft, which means uh, mechanical kind of traps. And mm -hmm. I'm a bit paranoid, apparently, as well. So. Right. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll come on to these later on, but let's let's start with a little bit of narrative. So the exploration journal, this is big, right? I mean, there's there's hundreds of pages here, and this is the nice deluxe version, which is leather bound or something like that, I think. And every location in the game is is in here, and we actually start off at location 101 which is the shunned lands and we can see that we're at location 101 because if we just move our figures off here there you go this is where we are it tells us that in the setup this is where we start it's location 101 each of these locations has two sides this is different from the original game so you have this side uh, which is all nice and good and all of the weirdness has been pushed back but that's the, the other side is, is the weirdness. So one of the big differences between this and the original game is in the original game, when an area wasn't lit by a men here, it would disappear. The card would physically not be there and you couldn't enter that space. Now, if that happens, the card remains there, but it's on its weirdness side. And you can go in there, although it's quite dangerous to do so. So this is where we start. We are in the shunned lands. Uh, we'll come on to the rest of the stuff later on. But yeah, this is where we start. So let's have a look in the book. So Shund Lands. It says here, if you don't have hints part one status, go to verse 19. I'll explain statuses in a minute. But basically, we don't have that. So we're going to go to verse 19. Verse 19. If there is only one character in the party, go to verse 20. No, right. None of you are strangers to the trails of Avalon. After all, you've already journeyed to this network of wild footpaths, waystones and poorly kept dirt roads. Yet ten years spent in the safety and comfort of bustling coastal towns made you forget. Worse yet, it made you soft. The trail lays this bare in a painful way. Your legs tire quickly, making your progress slower than you have hoped. The cold of night spent without a campfire uh, to avoid drawing attention of the brigands who watch the trails like hawks bites harder than you have imagined. After days of hardships, you finally meet another traveller heading in the same direction, and your heart jumps with hope. But as you approach and hail them, they turn toward you, revealing a teeth-rimmed hole that stretches from their limp jaw to their belly. Thin arms, too long and with far too many elbows, extend in your direction. Then, as you flee in panic, a thunderstorm catches you on the stony highland. 
Soaked to the bone, chased by strange whales that seem to come from everywhere at once, you all take shelter in the only hideout visible, under an old crooked dolmen, its stone roof and two walls protecting you from elements and prying eyes. There you meet another, travellers bound by the same fear and pains. As you wait for the storm to pass, you discover you are also heading in the same direction, north, toward the mountains of central Avalon and the King's Pass. Once the sun finally pierces the clouds, journeying together seems the only reasonable idea. After all, it is good to have someone watch while you sleep or make bandits think twice about ambushing you. Then, as long days and even longer evenings by the campfire drag on, you gradually open up and tell one another what set you on this dangerous path in the first place. It feels good to share your loss, hopes and fears with someone. It feels good not to be alone with your thoughts here, on the edge of the weirdness that can hear everything and turn our every fear against you. When you reach the northern edge of Four Maidens, you know one another well enough and are determined to head together at least as far as the King's Pass, which now seems almost in your grasp. So if there are four characters in play, go to verse 21, otherwise verse 17. The lively and safe coastal areas of Four Maidens now lie behind you. The path ahead, uphill and desolate, glistens with morning dew and floating wisps of opalescent weirdness. It's been a while since you've seen this capricious, ever-changing fog with your own eyes. The waystone, nestled in the high grass just off the trail, looks almost spent. You walk toward it and inspect it with interest. Every waystone has its keeper in civilised lands, a feudal lord, a local town, or a brotherhood sworn to protect it. But here, so close to the pure weirdness that still covers most of Avalon, these landmarks are often snuffed out by the powers that dwell in the fog. There are also mentions of those who drain their power on purpose, though you can't comprehend how vile one would have to become to stoop this low. It's been a while since you've reactivated any stones, and it does require some effort and proper offerings, but you know you will never reach the King's Pass without their guiding light. As your hands carefully touch the surface, the stone comes back to life, strands of weirdness in the air immediately slithering away like snakes from a flaming torch. You're lucky. The stone was not yet fully exhausted, and waking it up was easy. The others that lie ahead will require more effort. So we're going to have a quick break here and I'm going to tell you a bit about these waystones and we're going to have a look at the map. So what you've got in each of these location cards is sometimes you will have this symbol in one or more of the corners. This indicates a potential location for a waystone. These are the waystones. There are three of these miniatures included in the game. And during the game, we are going to be able to activate these weird stones. It's normally very, very expensive, but because of the, the current story, it basically says that we've managed to reactivate this one uh, at no actual cost. Now, what a waystone does, if you think about it thematically, these waystones will drive back the weirdness. So when we first came to this land, it was absolutely covered in this weirdness, which is like this strange magical fog. And these waystones will drive back the weirdness and it's essential because, yeah, it's really, really dangerous and you don't want to be you don't want to be in there if you can help it. So every time you place one of these waystones on the corner, all of the cards touching it will flip over to the other side. And then at the start of each day, if that was not there, for example, if it was to fade away, then these locations would flip back to the weirdness. But as I said, one of the big differences between this and the previous version of Tainted Grail is that you can still move through locations uh, that are covered in weirdness. Each It's just quite dangerous to do so. So since we've put that there, that means this is now lit. It's open. It's safe for us to move on to. Let's put that there. Right. Um, please note that location 102 has two waystone marks. So there is another space for a waystone there. So if we wanted to go east from here, that we can. I, we, we could like that, but we don't need to, because this waystone is actually going to like this one. But yeah, another waystone could be put there, but there's no waystones on this side. Right, we now gain a status. So at this point, I am going to just explain to you how these statuses work. There is a big status sheet. They're all in alphabetical order, and most of these statuses have various numbers. I forgot to rub one out from this afternoon. There we go. And basically, throughout the whole game, what you're going to be told to do is occasionally you will be told to write a certain status on here. That shouldn't be marked as well. Uh, and very often in the game, it's going to ask you, do you have a particular status? 
and then you look on here and if you've got that status it will give you a different outcome so it's telling us that we need to gain the hints part one status so what we do is we just shade that in so we now have hints part one and if you've been watching carefully you may have remembered when i first went to this location it said if you have hints part one or sorry if you don't have hints part one go somewhere well now we do have hints part one what that means is if we now explore this location again we will get a different bit of narrative and that's really important in this game you will want to make a lot of notes because if you forget that you will you might miss and you probably will miss an important part of the story so draw and resolve an event card right now before we do that and Pete, pete's in charge of the event cards we are playing chapter one tonight and the setup card for chapter one told us to take the event cards from chapter one which is numbers one to seven and stack them in order from one to seven and every time you are told to take an event card which happens at the start of each day you basically take the top card off the deck read it and follow the instructions on it there's lots of different stories in this game there is a main storyline which is driven through the event cards for the chapter but as you are exploring the land you will find lots and lots of side quests let's call them other things that are going on in the world that some might be linked to the main storyline some might be just separate um but the main storyline is always through through this one so pete if you want to draw chapter one part one chapter one part one a path less traveled place this card in your active events area now that the waystone is active you steal yourself for the journey ahead knowing that reaching the king's pass won't be easy you're about to take your first step on a road to the pass when a strange feeling creeps up your back. Is something watching you from the mist? <laughs> Probably the cat. I think he's Loki. Yeah. <laughs> your initial exploration now ends. You are free to do whatever you wish to pursue your quest. Um, it's a quest card, so it's a quest, quest on it. It says, reach the king's pass where roads leading to many forlorn lands cross. Uh, and then it reminds you, you may explore location 101 again yes. to find the more exciting places and stories. The exploration action is okay. free. So this card has an icon in the top left. That means it is a quest card. It's going to stay in play. So this is our active quest, which is we need to reach King's Pass. So Rob, having looked at the map. Well, it's right in the middle. It, it's there. So if we're here. Yeah, we're at the According bottom. to our old, old schooly mappy. Mm -hmm. It's over in that direction. Doesn't mean we have to go in that direction. But, and we didn't this afternoon when we played through it. Um, but yeah, so we know that it's roughly in that direction. Now, it said exploration ends. And that means we are now in the day phase. So each round of the game represents one day of time and consists generally of three phases. There is a start of day phase where you do some stuff and you draw an event card. Then there is the main day phase where we're going to be spending energy to perform actions, explore, move around the map, do all of those things. And then at the end of the day, we do the end of day phase where we rest and we do things like that. So there's lots of different things that you can do in the game. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to show you now uh, my player board. Because I'm going to show you this, which isn't in focus. So I will now press a button and hopefully it will go into focus. There you go. So this is the list of all of the different actions that you can do in the game. And if you think, oh, wow, that's loads. This is really complicated. Actually, it's not that many. So one of the things that you can do in the game is you can explore. Now, this has a default cost of zero energy. So in other words, you can take this action and it's not going to cost you any, any, any energy. You can only do it in this type of location, which is basically not one that's covered in uh, weird stuff. And what you do is you open the exploration journal at the page and you read you read through the book so basically reading from the exploration journal is what you do when you take the explore action the travel action which we're not going to do right now but you'll see that soon that is where you spend one energy to move to an adjacent location and stuff happens when you get there you can activate a waystone we'll talk about that later on but that is where you put one of those waystone miniatures on the board and it drives back the weirdness you can challenge a guardian. We might not explain guardians tonight. If we haven't met a guardian by the end of the playthrough tonight, I will briefly mention what they are. Location action. Some of the locations in the game actually have an action printed on them. If they do, you can do that action. I'll come to that in a second as well. And finally, you've got your character ability 
secrets, items, skills, and actions. So you might have your own stuff that you've got that you can do. And at this point, I'm going to show you my player board. So each character has six attributes, aggression, courage, practicality, empathy, caution, and spirituality. The number of cubes that you have is basically how good you are at that particular thing. And the reason why we've got these cubes in here is you'll notice the double chevrons. That means that Elgin starts with to spirituality, but he doesn't start with any caution. Now, you're probably not going to see this tonight, but I will explain this at the end of the video. We are going to be gaining experience points through certain things that we do. We can spend those experience points to buy new cubes, which will improve our character. And then even when you're full with cubes, you can buy skills, which I'll show you at the end of this video. We also have space to track how much food we are carrying. Now, I've got the uh, deluxe resource add-on. Normally, you would normally just use red cubes for these but because I've got the nice extra resources, so I've got two food. I have no money whatsoever because Pete stole it. Experience points you will collect here and magic you will collect here. Now, food and wealth can be shared, can be traded between players if they're at the same location. Experience and magic cannot be traded. You cannot swap these with other players. We also have three tracks. We have an energy track, which starts each day at six. So that's my, my default energy at the start of the day. Uh, you will spend energy to perform various actions in the game. You have your health bar here, and you'll notice the health bar has this weird bit of plastic on. What that means is, as your health goes down, so let's say my health was two, that acts as a limit on my energy. So if my health was two, I've only got four energy for that particular day. So it's quite a realistic system. You've also got your terror, which goes up. So it starts at zero, but going up in terror is bad. Now, there is one thing that I do want to mention about this game. If you are new to the Tainted Grail system, you need to throw away all of the concepts that you've got about similar games where it is a fantasy cooperative adventure game where you go around fighting monsters. Because in most of those other games, what happens at the end of a fight or at the end of a scenario? You go back to full health. Not in Tainted Grail. Tainted Grail is a very gritty, dark, more realistic system. You are going to heal one health per day and only if you eat so your health if you take damage is not just immediately going to recover so when you first start playing this game and i'm saying this from experience of playing the original game it might not be the same in this you need to be very careful about going into combat encounters at the start because if you end up taking loads of damage at the start then that's going to restrict what you are able to do and it's going to take you quite a while to heal and it's going to take you a lot of food to heal. So anyway, that, that is my character. All the characters are slightly different. Let's just make sure I reset these. Um, but they are all of the different actions that you can do. Now, I did say I was going to come back to the location action. And if we just have another look at the map, you will see that this location we are in, let me just, since I can zoom in with this fancy camera, there you go. So the location we are in, has a location action which is going to cost two energy we harvest the wild crops and we gain one food now this icon here means whenever we do this action we are going to put an hourglass on it when there's an hourglass on it we can't do it again and the hourglass is removed at the start of each day so basically it means we can do that each day now before I go any further, I do want to mention the fact that we do not have to stay as a party. We are three characters. We could split up, go our own ways and do completely our own things if we want to. We could stay all together as a party. Or we could, two of us could stay together as a party and one person go off the other way. There are lots of advantages and disadvantages to staying as a party and not staying as a party. And you will find that as you play the game yourself. But... If you are in a party, then any action that you do, for example, harvest the wild crops, that energy cost is not paid per character. It is paid by the party. So, for example, let's say Rob decided to wander off on his own and me and Pete decided to stay and harvest wild crops. The cost of doing that action is two energy. And Pete could say, I'm going to spend the two energy. So basically, Pete does all of the hard work. I do nothing and we gain one food. At that point, we didn't really need to be a party. 
But what I'm saying is, whenever you are doing anything in the game and there is a cost, that cost is paid and shared however you like amongst the party, including one character paying nothing. You are allowed to do that. The exception to that is when you are doing one of your own abilities, either from your, your player board or your skills, which we don't have yet, or your items, which we don't have yet. If you're doing one of your own things, you have to contribute. You don't have to spend all of it. You can still share it, but you have to do at least, you have to commit at least one energy. And I'm talking about energy costs. That rule applies to everything. So if we do something in the game, for example, activating a waystone, we'll come on to this a bit more later on, but activating a waystone is going to cost health and terror. And the group cost can be shared however you like amongst the players that are actually doing that action. And it doesn't have to be equal. So that's a really fundamental rule of the game. So there's lots of different things we can do, but because we now have hints status part one, which I've actually, I've, I've crossed off the wrong status. So that's a good start. There you go. I would suggest that we we read the uh, we explore the location again because it's not going to cost us any energy. We don't yeah. have to, but but Seems we like might a, as well. Good plan. Yeah, yeah. Okay, sense. so because I haven't spoken enough yet, my voice mm -hmm. is going to be wrecked by the end of today. Okay, Shunned Lands. If you don't have the hints part one status, go to verse nineteen. We now do. So, once fertile farmland, now a dreary waste, punctuated by wooden carcasses of abandoned windmills. As you watch their frayed blades slice the grey sky to pieces, movement flutters in the corner of your eye. You feel something watching you from between the structures. But that can't be right. Only shadows dwell here, reminding sore-footed travellers of the region's opulent past. So, we have various options. Now, I'm going to show you this in the book. These are the options that we have. So, we are currently exploring. So everything we do from this point is all classed as exploration until we see the words exploration ends. So in other words, whichever option we choose here, it is going to direct us to various verses within this particular section of the rulebook until we see the word exploration ends. So we could go to the windmills. Now, this is going to cost one energy if we want to go to the windmills. We could follow the mysterious shadow which also is going to cost one energy, but it requires at least one courage. Now, I've got one. yeah, you've got one. Pete's got one. I don't think I have. Oh, no, I do. But as long as one person in the party has that, you can do it as a party. So in other words, if my character didn't have a courage, I couldn't do that on my own, but I could do it as long as I was with somebody else. The other thing we can do is we can turn back and return to the Four Maidens. Yeah, should we do that? Yeah, let's do, let's do that. Thank you very much for watching. Um, <laughs> or we could just leave. Exploration ends. So they are our four options of, of what we can do. Now, me and Pete have played through half of chapter one this afternoon just to get us up to speed and me to learn the system. So that means we're going to leave the decisions to you, Rob, because we know what happens with both of those. Well, yeah, that's going to be tough. Yeah. Um, okay. <laughs> Well, I was quite intrigued by this uh, thing that required us to have courage. And okay. Off and so you want to go. follow the mysterious shadow. Now, the yeah. decision is, um, did and the question is, did we have to decide when we started exploring whether we were in a party or not? Let me just check that in the rule book. I don't know if we needed to decide at the very start. So the action that we're taking is... Uh, where is it? Where is it? Here it is. Right. So the action is exploring and it says in a party, if you explore as a party, the cost of decisions and options doesn't scale with the number of party members unless the cost specifically states per party member or per character. So I think technically, and again, if you're watching this and you know, and you can help, let us know. Um, but technically, I think we decided to explore as a party. But now what we could do is we could just say leave exploration ends mm -hmm. and then we could come back because the actual exploration didn't cost any energy 
So do we do we want to stay as a party and do we all want to follow the mysterious shadow? Or does one of us want to do that on our own or two of us do that on our own? What do we think? Is that going to separate us? So, as it, it te technically, yes. So, so for example, if you follow the mysterious shadow yeah. on your own, yeah. then you will be the one having to spend the one energy. Yeah. But then everything that happens from that point will affect you. Mm -hmm. The advantage of that is if we read something in here and it says all party members gain a terror, yeah. then that would just be you. Yeah. The disadvantage is if it then requires, mm -hmm. and if, if something else happens that says if you have one aggression, yeah. you don't. But if Pete was with you, yeah, he would. So and risks versus rewards. Yes. Mm. Well, I'm quite happy to go, but um, do I, um, yeah, do you guys want to come? What do you think? What do you reckon? Stick together until until we need to make a decision that splits us up I'm, I'm happy that we stick together for now yeah, yeah. okay so we're, we're all gonna follow the mysterious shadow so we have to pay one energy cost as a party so somebody has to pay one energy okay so since i've proposed it shall i oh you've also got seven yeah i've got one more energy oh, i didn't realize okay thing. nice yeah. yeah okay so rob's gonna spend the one energy for the group and we are going to go to verse one right verse one if you have the curious part one status we do not. There is nothing more to find here. Mm. Exploration ends. That's disappointing. Well, we don't have that status, yeah. so that's good. Yeah. So read on. Catching shadows is a fool's errand. As soon as you move in its direction, the shape struts away and disappears into the surrounding weirdness. To ensure it wasn't just hallucination, you approach the spot where it disappeared. The footprints on the ground are very real and not human. Their shape and irregular gait betray that whoever left them was severely disfigured. A glint of gold in the mud catches your attention as you inspect the footprints. It is a golden coin from Homelands, bearing the countenance of King Arthur Pendragon. A hole drilled through it with a leather strap reveals the creature was wearing it as a charm. You know of only one group that wears the mementos of, of one true king as their amulets, but what would they do so close to civilised realms? You fail to find more clues, but you do locate another, smaller and more regular set of tracks leading from one of the neglected farm fields to one of the dilapidated windmills. Is someone still living there, sustaining themselves on wild crops? So we gain one wealth, which represents the bits of gold coins that we found, and we gain the curious part one status. Now, what that basically means is, if we choose this option again, there is nothing else to find. So all it's doing is marking the fact that we have done that. We have read that. Now, we have gained one wealth. That is one wealth between us. Unless it says one wealth per party member, it is just one wealth. Well, you haven't got any wealth. I don't. So. You seem to have five as well. Is that right? I think you're supposed to have one. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I didn't realise. There's, there's big was, coins and yeah. there's little coins. Okay, yeah. Okay, so there you go. Thank you very much. I've got the one wealth. Rob spent the energy. I got the wealth. This sounds, <laughs> this sounds good. Uh, and that's it. Exploration ends. So again, exploration ends. We come out of that part and we go back into options. I think it does explain about making and breaking the party. Yeah. So it just it just said that you can't split it up when you're in the once middle. Once you're in the middle of something. Exactly. So once you're in the middle of an action mm -hmm. yeah. and the mm -hmm. action is exploring. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So once we decided to explore as a party, yeah. we were then in a party until the end of that action. OK, good to know. Makes sense. So what action do we want to do again? Again, we could explore and we could go to the windmills. That will cost one energy. We could travel or we could harvest the wild crops to gain some food. Well, I think we should do that at least once this today, shouldn't we? Before, I think we, we should. Leave, at least. I think we should. So should we do that next? Okay. Harvest some wild crops. Yeah. I'll chip in some energy for that. Well, I'll, I'll chip in some energy as well. So me and Pete have chipped in one energy. Yeah. And we've harvested some wild crops. We gain a food. Go on, give it to Rob. All right, thank we you. did all the work. You can get the food. Yeah, there you go. That's <laughs> how so I like it. Uh, Sarah has noticed they got rid of reputation. Yes. So in the original Tainted Grail games, you had another type of resource, which was reputation. And what's interesting is when I got this very nice new deluxe resource things, it included the reputation. Ones. And I was like, well, why have they included these? I don't need these. 
it's because this can be used with the original game, at which point you will need these. We're not going to need these for, for Kings of Ruin, but you will need those if you're playing the, uh, the original game. Right, so are we going to go to the windmills? And if so, are we going as a party or not? <laughs> what else is there to do here? Assuming we're not going to turn back and return to the Four Maidens, I'm totally reading that tonight in bed because I think that is... I mean, that's going back home. That's effectively... Mm. Uh, yeah, mm. I don't think we want to do that, but it, I want to know what that says. So we've got go to the windmills. We've done the location action. I have an action on my thing. It's not relevant for the moment, but it might be later. Yeah, me too. I could I could create a consumable item okay. using my hand, handcraft, and I think one of them gives me food. Oh, right, so okay. That's a useful for later, maybe. Yep. So our overall plan, then, is to head that way, isn't it? But we're doing things roughly that way and we've got we are limited in time well we don't know we've got seven cards in the okay. event deck and we're going to be drawing one at the start of each day we don't know what card number seven is possible there might be more cards added yeah but card number seven might say <clears throat> you okay. all lose the world blows up we, we don't know so we are wanting to kind of generally head that way we are but we're wanting to kind of collect resources and investigate stuff and, and find out seen, what it's all about we've seen this set of footprints yeah leading to the one of the windmills that leads us to think that there might be somebody living in the windmills he says knowing full well what's in the windmills because we <laughs> did it a few hours ago yeah, yeah, right, Rob. Should we go and have a look at the windmills? It seems like the uh, the obvious next course. And what do you want to do? do shall we shall we all go to the windmills? Uh, as a party? For, for safety reasons, I think. Okay. So we're all gonna we're all gonna choose the explorer action as a party. Someone has to spend one energy. I'm happy to spend the one energy. Mm -hmm. So we now go to verse three. Right. If you have the sharp tooth part one status. Nope. If you have the Songs of Avalon part one status. Nope. Mm -hmm. If you have the Negotiator part one status. Nope. If there is an hourglass on this location. Oh, oh there is. Yes, there okay, is. so this is different from what we did this afternoon. Uh, uh. Because we've just harvested their yes. crops. Oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh Oops. Sorry. Can so, you put it back? Should have done it in a different order. Footprints of a small child weave between the fields and ruins, eventually leading you to an inhabited windmill. The family who dwells here managed to avoid the worst effects of exposure to weirdness, but then three idiots came along and harvested all their crops. <laughs> Still, they are malnourished, half wild and angry. They pelt you with heavy stones and retreat to their hideout on the windmill's second floor, barring the entrance. You're not sure what enraged them, but it could have something to do with the wild harvest in your sacks. The family depends on wild fields for survival, and they already yield scant crops, even without travellers taking their share. <laughs> right. Oops. Oops. So, each party member loses two health, oh. reduced by one for each point of their practicality, which represents that you're <laughs> clever and you hide behind a, a shield. Oh. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm hiding my, behind my So I have one practicality, so I take one damage. I've got two, so I take none. You take no damage. Unfortunately, Osbert zero. gets pelted with stones. Oh dear. Yeah. And how many do you start with, Osbert? Five. Ooh. Oh, your track's really low. Yeah, I did think that was a bit low. Gosh. Very low health. But interestingly, mm. unlike the original game, that health is actually quite high. Mm. So even if you're on three health, you've still got mm. seven energy, mm. which is good doesn't count my energy so much yeah they've really fi mm. fixed that in this version right if you have at least two empathy now i have one and osbert has one but i don't think that's enough um whenever a character performs an action yeah okay leaving the party where was it i read this somewhere we read this this afternoon it's about requiring certain things. So apologies for this. I did find it this afternoon and I was going to read it again. Um, but I think one character has to have that. When it says at least two, 
I think it's one character has has to have at least two. I think that's the way we'll play it, unless somebody tells me otherwise. I do remember reading it this afternoon, and I can't remember where I read it. Oh, it's here. That's it. It's in the Using the Exploration Journal. It is enough for one party member to fulfil the requirements. Uh, uh, yes. Okay, so we don't have to empathy. Which means exploration ends. So okay. that is already a very different outcome from what we had this afternoon when mm. we played through it. Mm -hmm. Me and he made friends with them. They gave us all sorts of stuff. Oops. Tour of the windmill. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing. It makes absolute thematic sense. Yeah. We have just harvested all of their crops that they need mm. to survive mm. and then knocked on their door and gone, hello. <laughs> so, yeah, from a story point of view, that's fantastic. I, I, I love it. Yeah. I suppose if we are more empathic, maybe that means we can let we, crops... We, something would have happened, yeah. yes. Yeah, but as it is, that's it. There is nothing more for us to do here in terms of exploration unless we were to give up. So... Travelling, I think, is the next thing to do. Yep. So travelling can either be done individually or as a party. The cost to travel from one location to an adjacent location, and you only ever move orthogonally, is one energy per character that is travelling. But if you are travelling in a party, just like the normal rules, that energy can be spread between the party. So, for example, if we decide as a party to move from here to here, the cost is going to be three energy, and we can pay for that however we want. So one character could actually pay all three energy if they wanted to, which I think thematically represents that he's giving the others piggybacks or, or or something like that. And thank you very much, Sarah. Yes, I think it is. I think it is the same for this version. Uh, Michael is saying that the non spools non poor speakers are a bit low. Yeah, it's probably just because I talk really loud. <laughs> Let's move that around a little bit. I'm a bit quiet, unfortunately. I do talk loud. I'll turn Rob's microphone up a little bit over there. Okay, so... so um, Try not to talk as loud. Are we travelling? I would suggest we all travel together As into there. Now, Rob's got... Uh, Osbert has got six uh, energy. You've got four I've got and I've four. got five. So how about Rob spends two and I spend one? Yeah, if Rob wants to give me a piggyback. It demonstrates yeah. that rule. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't mind. Yeah. So you spend two energy. Yeah. You spend one energy, and we all travel as a group mm -hmm. to the Crooked Shelter. Now, the Crooked Shelter has... 102. If you look carefully, it has a lightning bolt icon on it. Now, a lightning bolt icon means whenever you travel to this location, you immediately do this as part of the travel action. Um, sometimes there will be an hourglass symbol on there, and if there was an hourglass symbol... You would travel to it, but then you would put hourglasses on it, and it won't trigger again until all of the hourglasses have been removed. As it is, we travel here, and it says, if you don't have the hints part two, which we do not, we immediately explore this location. So we don't have a choice. As soon as we go there, we explore the location. Right, and it says, if you don't have the hints part two status, go to verse 10. 10. Right, I will try and talk not as loud. With the dreary shunned lands behind you, you now draw close to King's Pass. You've already walked this road once in the opposite direction, though the time makes memories into a blur. You know there should be a narrow, winding trail leading up to the pass not far in the east. To the west, the land drowns in pure weirdness. You'd rather not take that path, as each step through this ever-shifting mist is a real danger, and spending a night in its coils can cost you your life or sanity. Still, they say that adventurers brave enough to walk beyond the lights of waystones sometimes find things that wouldn't be possible otherwise, for better or worse. So, we need to look at the map, and we need to look at the direction keys on here. So you will notice that we have 104 to the west and 103 to the east so what that means is i'm going to go to the big deck of locations and i'm going to put 103 here and i'm putting it this side up because there is a waystone so that's there you can have a look at that if you want to have a look at that 104 however is going to be placed that side up because there is no waystone so again 
You can go on to here if you want to, and you will see if we were to go on to here, each party member gains a terror and we read Book of Secrets, verse 70. Now, if you're like me and you want to know everything, you're not going to win this game. There is no way on one playthrough that you're going to be able to find everything. But this is it. There is there is information here if we go there while it's still like that. Um, OK, and then we gain the hint part two status. So. I guess the first thing we do is we explore the location. Yeah, OK, let's do it. So 102, we explore 102. If you don't have the hints part two, go to verse 10. So you go. A crooked statue of a hooded four dweller presides over the rolling hills, a repulsive memento that this land once belonged to other, much older beings. They say the former rulers of Avalon left these statues, commonly called menhirs, all over the island. To what end? You cannot fathom. The statue's long cloak splits near the base, providing enough space for a grown human to squeeze inside. A broken rune wagon rests on the side of an old trail that weaves past the sentinel, the wagon's guards looking at you suspiciously. So this is uh, a men here. You will recognise these if you've played the original Tainted Grail campaign, but there is one here, although it's... Uh, yeah, they don't work in the same way as they do in the original one. So we have choices. We could spend two energy to demolish the statue but to do that requires two aggression and none of us have two aggression yet but once we've gained xp leveled up bought some more aggression we might decide to come back here and smash the statue mm -hmm. i don't know why we do that but yeah the other option we can do is we can spend one energy to enter the statue we could spend one energy to study the magic aura but if we do that, it requires two spirituality, so I can do it, but it requires the faint notion part one status. Now, we don't have that at the moment, but if you're watching this video tonight, remember that if we have the faint notion part one status, then I can come back here and I can study the magic aura of the statue. All of those cost energy. There are two other things we can do that don't cost energy. We can search the mounds beyond the statue and we can approach the broken rune wagon. So those are our options. Those are our exploration options. We don't have a location action. We do have our own character actions. So we've got lots of choices. Now, before we continue, I just want to mention about energy because you might be thinking, Paul's got four energy left. That means he can do four more things and end up on zero. In this game, you ideally don't want to go to zero at the end of the day, because if you go to zero, you are exhausted. And what that means is at the end of the day, you will only go up to four for the next day. If you're not exhausted, you will go back to your default level. So for me, my default level is six. What that means is if I go down to zero energy, the next day I will have four. So if effectively I've gained four. But if I was on one, then because I'm not exhausted, on the next day I'll go up to six. So you need to think about your energy carefully and ideally try not to spend all of it unless you really need to. And Rob, yours is, yours is even more important because you would go up to seven. So if you ended on one, you'd go to seven. If you yeah. ended on zero, you'd only go to four. So I'd lose three. You, yeah. It's effectively, yeah, you're missing out on yeah. two because it'd go from zero to four yeah. or one to six. So, yeah. Okay. Right. Well, we can't demolish the statue. We know that. So we're doing this all together, are we? Uh, we decided we were exploring together, but yeah. we, we could, could come out. We could just say leave, yeah. not do anything, yeah. and then we could explore Again. individually well li li leaving is a genuine option because we know we've got to go that way so we mm. could just decide well we're not going to bother with the statue we're not going to bother with the uh this um wagon let's just go that way i mean we we, we absolutely could mm. we could just say we're not doing any of this and we'll just travel again to here but it's a free action to approach the it's, it doesn't cost us any energy to approach no. the wagon 
it does cost us one energy or somebody one energy if we were to climb inside the mm -hmm. menu. I'm just going to think ahead a minute because that's my special ability. And we're going to look at here. So we can move to location 103 and it is a safe location to move to because of this waste area. Yeah. However, from 103, we can go north to 105. This will be covered in weirdness because there isn't a waystone here. So we have two options. We could activate this waystone. Well, so that's, that's another thing we can do. Activate which that we could. Thing. Now in a three player game, activating a uh, sorry, a waystone, activating a waystone is one magic per character. Now that's not per character in the party, that's per character in the game. So it's going to cost us three magic and in addition to that either one wealth or one food per character. So it's basically making a sacrifice, making an offering. Alternatively, instead of paying that cost in resources, we can do pay the blood price, which is three health per character. So that's nine health and gain two terror per character. So it's nine health and six terror. Now, if that seems a lot, it is a lot. We are playing tonight on the normal default mode of the game. There is a story mode of the game, which reduces that cost massively. And to be honest, I, I'll be honest with you here, when I play this game with Vicky, which we are going to be playing through this campaign ourselves, we are going to be playing on story mode. I didn't want to play on story mode tonight because I wanted to show you what, what the default setting of game is. But there is a story mode included, official rules, which reduces that cost massively. It also in changes a few other rules as well, but that's one of the big ones. So that is one of our options. So we, we can activate the waystone here right now. We haven't got enough magic. We haven't got enough magic. We'd have to pay the blood price. Which we can barely afford. Which we can barely... Well, it's 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 effectively, it's three health each. Yeah. Now, I we'd, we'd pay more. Yeah. We'd maybe pay four health and you'd pay one. Mm -hmm. So we could. Yeah. And gain loads of terror. We could. We're, we're massively damaged. And based on what I said earlier on, we only heal one hit point yeah. a day. Yeah. Or we go here and we can still activate the waystone here. Now, there is another option because I'm playing the game. I'm a candle maker. Mm. So my special ability is that I can make a weird candle. Now, a weird candle is a one-shot item which can temporarily remove the weirdness from one card for, for one day. So we could go here. That would put location 105 there, weird side up. We then make a candle. We then use the candle to make that nice and then we go there so we could we, we we do have lots of options just wondering about this card because yes it does say draw and resolve a green encounter here. right so yeah so when we move onto that card this is what i was saying about the timers when we move on to there we will draw and resolve a green encounter mm. but we will put okay two of those on it and you won't draw another green encounter until those have gone. Mm -hmm. So what that represents is that there is some kind of beastie living in this area. And if you get rid of it, it's going to take wow. two days before another one comes back. Okay. So yeah, that that's a new thing, I think, for this yeah. for this edition of the game, which I, I quite like. So there's, yeah, if we go that way, we have to deal with that as well. If we go that way, we have to resolve a green encounter. So there are three types of encounters in the game. The green ones represent kind of things that you would find in the wild, generally wild animals. It might be bandits. It might be things like that. The blue ones generally represent things that you're going to find in settlements, which could either be drunken peasants or something like that. And the purple ones are kind of weird, mystical, magical encounters that could be all sorts of things. The encounters come in two types. There are either combat encounters or diplomacy encounters. And there are both types mixed into those decks. So you don't know what it's going to be until you draw it. However, this is chapter one. The top card says your first encounter. So just to get you started with the game, the first card that we draw from each of those decks is always going to be a fixed card. It's a relatively easy encounter. But after you've resolved that encounter, that particular card is removed from the game. You never, ever use it again. And then the rest of the deck is random. But what you didn't see, because we did this before we started, those decks only contain tier one monsters. There are four tiers of encounters. 
and because we are playing a three player game we're only using the tier one if we were playing a four player game it would be tier one and tier two and as you play through the campaign the various chapters of the story will tell you to add in the tier two cards and then at a certain point you will be told to add in the tier three cards and remove the tier one cards so those, en those encounter decks are going to get more dangerous as the campaign goes on right thoughts well, what should we do I thought I might use my handcraft skill to get something that might be situationally useful as we go. Mm -hmm. um, so go me, through that again. It's two energy. It me two energy, and I gain a consumable item, which has to be either a smoke bomb, a snare, or a fire bomb. Okay. They sound like they might, might be useful against this, for example. Right. Um, so should I do that? Or... I mean, yeah, if you want to do that, and maybe me and Pete can do something here. Sure. Okay. Okay. So you do your thing. So you spend two energy. Yeah. And we have a we have a consumable deck. So there's a yeah. small deck of cards which are consumable items. Uh, they are normally shuffled because sometimes you will be told to gain a random consumable item. But Rob's ability allows him to actually yeah. search through the deck and take one of three ones. So either so yeah, I'll set them aside actually. Okay. Start. So these are the three that Osberg can make. So what have we got? We've got a snare, a firebomb. And a smoke bomb. Yep. And oh right, okay. There yeah, the snare is basically um end of the day, spend one energy, go 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 trapping, try and find something. Yeah. Firebomb's gonna help us in combat. And the smoke bomb right, we can escape from a combat. Yeah. I think the snare's gonna give us two food on average. So yep. um but we're not desperate for food at the moment. Not I yet. I think you taking one of these two, which are useful in combat. Okay. Uh, for when we deal with that. Mm -hmm. um, and this one deals damage, so maybe I'll take that one. That's quite a good one. Yeah. Okay. So you're going to take that. So yep. those just go back into the consumable deck. Yeah. Meanwhile, while Osbert's making a a firebomb. What was that in the background? Boom. <laughs> <laughs> um. I fancy entering the statue. Yeah. It, it, do you want to do that as it, well? It, it feels like a bit feels a bit weird, but that's kind of what the game's all about, isn't it? Doing. Should we do that as a party? Should we try and both get into the statue together? Right, I'll follow you. <laughs> okay, so I'll, I'll spend the energy, but me and yeah. Pete are going to choose the exploration action together and we're going to enter the statue. Right. You squeeze into a narrow opening at the foot of the statue and a vile stench immediately overwhelms you. Sorry about that. Some, I shouldn't have let you go first. Some previous travellers decided to use this hidden place as a toilet. Nice and adorned the walls with profanities. Nice. Mm. If you have at least one caution, yes. well, I'm glad you came with me because I, I've got none of it, <laughs> go to verse 3, otherwise exploration would have ended. Oh. So, among the obscene messages, you find a hidden note written in charcoal. Hey dear, I did as instructed, pushed everything into weirdness to the west, 100 paces forward and 20 to the left of the old milepost. Don't let this stuff sit there for too long, or something strange is bound to happen. Mm. So we gain Secret Messages, Part 1. And again, we will find something later on in the campaign that says, Do you have Secret Messages, Part 1? But the clue was... Oh, and we've got a new lead. So new lead is kind of a little bit like the side questy type things. Someone hid something in the weirdness covered lands to the west. Ooh. So there's some stuff here. There is something in the weirdness lands hidden to the west. And we've got it's 100 paces forward and 20 to the left of the old milepost. Ah. Well, we didn't want to go that way. We but... didn't want to go that way, but maybe maybe mm. you want to go that way now. Mm. Well, the rest of us go somewhere else. Mm. Mm. Maybe one of us could branch off there. And... Yeah. So I'll remind you of my ability. I can make a weird candle. It's two energy and one food. And I can make as many of them as we want. Up to the limit of the number of them in the deck. But when you use one, you discard it back to the deck. Well, that sounds... It sounds like an interesting idea that you should um, craft one of those uh, candles, weird candles, and then one of us take it, takes it into the weirdness... Mm -hmm to go and explore and find this stuff. So, assuming the secret message was leading us to here, yeah. and just so you know, Rob, we didn't do this this afternoon. 
So this secret message is new to us. Mm -hmm. Assuming it's leading to this location, are you thinking that I craft the weird candle, use it, and then you go in there, do the thing, and come back? Yeah. Now, how much energy have you got left? I've got four left. Now, you do have a downside. Yes, because if I use energy for movement, for travel, and that travel takes me below two, so to one or zero, then I take a, 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 an injury, a wound. Yeah. I lose a hit point. So if you think that you're going to be able to get in there, do whatever is required and get out, because what you don't want to do is you don't want to be in weirdness at the end of a day, because if you are, you lose two health and gain two terror. So oh. as well as the penalty for moving in, right. if you are in there at the end of the day, bang. So I can get in there and I can get out. But if I, if I linger and use energy to do anything while I'm there, I'm in trouble. One, one health isn't that massive when you're a maximum health at the moment. Yeah, I think we're okay doing it. Mm. It's fun. Yeah. Right. So I'm going to spend... Do you mind paying the food? No, not so. Right. So I'm going to spend the two energy. You're going to pay the food. Could you pass me a weird candle from the consumable deck? Okay. Thank you very much. So the weird candle says, uh, zero energy, disperse the weirdness, discard this card to flip the location you're in or a connected location from the weirdness side to the non-weirdness side. There you go, Rob. Thank you very much. I'll discard that. Then I'll flip this over. And let's have a look. Because I think it's fair to say, and this is not an opinion, but the artwork in this game is gorgeous. So, and it, it's very, very thematic. So... Yeah, we'll say that straight out. There you go. That is the strutting forest. You can go there and you can spend two energy to gather gemstones and gain one wealth. I uh, don't think I'm going to be doing... But are you Are you going to go in? First of all, I've got to move. So yes. So you spend one energy. One energy. And Girdwin moves in there. Girdwin moves in okay. there. So Girdwin is now in there. And then while you're there, you can explore the location at no cost. Yes, I'll do that. Right, so this is location 104. I'm especially counting my paces from milestones. I can. The top layer of soil is gone, taken either from the coastal winds or the weirdness. The trees strut on their gnarly roots, a parade of strange insects, their, leg studded, their legs studded with unearthed minerals. An old path weaves between the trees and heads north. You also notice a horseless cart sitting not far from the path in a place where thick weirdness used to hang not so long ago. So with, there's actually four options listed here. I'm just going to show you this because this is quite cool. So these are the four options in this book, but you will notice that one of them wants the focus things. I mean, you might be able to read that, but you're not supposed to be able to read that. This is hidden with a blue overlay. And at some point in the game, we are going to be given some kind of decoder which will allow us to read what that is until we have that we don't know what that is we can't read it okay so your options are one energy to inspect the glittering unearthed roots it requires osbert so you can't do that but rob could if he was there because it's about knowing a thing or two about precious stones option two you can search the cart option three you can leave unfortunately there is no mention of a milestone that secret message was a lie it said to the west um but could, could it have been that only on the weirdness side maybe i don't know um, um you can't explore if it's on the weirdness oh, side right. so it wouldn't yeah. be yeah so they didn't just leave unpleasant things behind they actually wrote something that wasn't mm. true well we gained secret message one but we've gone west. Yeah. I mean, we can go north from here, but then you're going to be off somewhere on your own. And Does that card get put there? That card does get put there. 107 does get put there. And there's no um, place to put a, 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 waystone. a waystone. So there's no way of illuminating it except with a candle. With a candle. And I've just burnt mine. So I don't think I'm going to be going that way. Um, 
question is, am I going to spend two energy to gather You've also gems. got this. Uh, you can search the cart, we'll which doesn't it. cost any energy. Oh, well, let's do that. Okay, so while you're there, you're going to search the cart. If you have the Sticky Fingers Part 2 status, nope. there's nothing more to find here. Exploration ends. Otherwise, read on. Okay, the cart probably belonged to a travelling merchant. Judging from the bloodstains on the front bench of the cart, the owner did not part with it willingly. The money box is smashed open and several containers are empty. Someone probably took the most precious loot and pushed the cart in with, with the rest into weirdness to retrieve it sometime in the future. Okay, well, maybe this is the... No, because it isn't saying anything about secret message. No. There's nothing incredibly precious among the remaining wares, but the sheer amount is enough for your sack to bulge out pleasantly. Gain two food, one wealth, one magic. Right, oh, gosh. Yeah. A bit bigger. <laughs> two food, one two wealth. Two food, one wealth, one magic, and item A. So, one of the other things that's new with this version of the game is the items are not just stacked in one big deck, which I think they were in the original. We have five different decks. So we got A, B, C, D, and E, and they get more powerful as the campaign goes on. So Pete, you have found one item. Ooh, we're not going to see you again, are we? No, he's gone. <laughs> Don't run. He's off to the shops. All right. What have you found? Okay. Oh, I found a warped staff. Okay. So here's what we found. It's a weapon. During an encounter, I can flip this card and gain a terror to gain a magic bonus without paying magic. Okay. Now, we, none of us have got equipment yet. Pete's just got his first piece of equipment. Michael has made a very good point. He said the message didn't say how far west. But if you have a look at the map, you will notice that on both of these cards, there is no arrows pointing to the left. And if we look back at our original map, if we're here, I, I think this is the edge of the map. I don't think we can go any further west from here because I think we're at, at the edge of the map. So, lies. Damn lies. Can I abseil off the edge? <laughs> okay. Right. Do you want to come back and then you're done for the day, pretty much? So, the alternatives were to spend uh, energy to... Um... to two energy to gain one wealth. And if I did that and then moved back, I'd be exhausted. You'd be exhausted and you'd and take damage because we were overloaded. Probably not a good idea. So let's just move back. So one energy to move back. Yeah. So you're on two. Your overloaded doesn't trigger. Yeah. Right. I'm on one energy, so I'm I'm done for the day. I wondered about the gemstone because my character can identify it. You uh, you can choose that. So it'd be yeah. one energy to get in there. Yeah. And then it'd be one energy to do this. Okay. And then it'd be one energy to go back. Does that stay well, lit? It stays lit until the start of the next day. Right, and, then right. flip. and then it flips. Okay. So I could move there. I'd have to be exhausted to look at it. And then I'd be okay because it would still be lit until the next day. Is that right? Yes. And then you yeah. could move out. Yeah. But I would be exhausted. So that would You be... would be exhausted too. You'd only have four energy the next day. But you yeah. could. You could go in there. There's a thing to do. But the only thing... Only you can do. We won't be able to do it once it flips back over again no. without having another candle, yeah. which is a lot of hassle. So. But also... At this moment, we've got enough stuff mm. to light another. We do. We have yeah. three magic between us, yeah. and we have lots of other stuff. So it, it's up to you, Rob. I know. Right. I know what I do. <laughs> I think, given that I'm, only, I'm going to be exhausted. I think it's, it's probably too high a price. You're not going to do it, okay? Yeah. But the next time you play this, yeah. you're totally doing it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And that's what I said earlier on in, in a playthrough of this game. You're going to miss stuff. You're not going to be able to do and see everything because there's there's so much to do. You've still got two energy left. Yeah. You've still got two energy left. Okay. Is there something else at this location? There's plenty of other things at this location. I'm not doing anything else. I'm having to sit down because I'm tired. But Put your down to well, this is the... you two could... You've got two energy left between us. How much okay. does it, energy does, does it cost to build a way mark? Uh, two. Actions overview, two energy to activate a waystone. Okay. So you could do that between you. 
Or you could... But don't we have to pay the rest of the cost as well? Which yes, we, oh, yeah. we do. Mm-hmm. But we've got it now. Okay. Now, don't forget, there are still two other actions that you can do yeah. here that don't cost energy. Oh. Yeah. You can search the mounds beyond the statue. Oh, we haven't done that yet. Yeah. And we can approach the broken rune wagon. Neither mm. of those have been done yet. Mm. Okay. Well, not both of them sound like they could be useful. Or dangerous. Which one do you want to do? <laughs> both. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll go and search the mounds, or do, do we both do it together? Well, we're back as a party again now, aren't we? We, we can yeah, be a party we, if yeah, we want to. Just whether we want to expose ourselves. The only the danger of me joining you yes. is if oh, I see. an effect of this says lose one energy. Right. Mm. You know, every party mm. member loses mm. one energy. It might do. Okay. And if it does, then I'd be exhausted. Okay. Mm. So I'm happy to not join you if you two want to go and search the map. It's a question of whether mm. we think we need your spirituality. Uh, Searching the mountains. Mm. Yes. Possibly. Maybe. Should we do the other thing then? What? Mm. Uh, look at the rune wagon. Approach the broken rune wagon where the guards are looking at us suspiciously. Pete could use his aggressive negotiations and shoot one of yeah. them in the head with his crossbow. Yeah. That could be a dif- diplomatic encounter of some sort, could. maybe. Um, why not? Shall we see what happens? I'm curious. So you two are going to approach the broken rune wagon? Yeah, let's do that. Okay, so verse 7. I'm going to take some photos, stick them on Instagram. Right. (laughs) If you're playing chapter 5 or further, so this is already interesting. We're in chapter 1. We're in chapter 1. But if we were in chapter 5 and this broken rune wagon is still there, we would be reading a totally different section. Okay. And this is very much a branching storyline with... Mm. All sorts of options and different things going on. Right. If you have the Friend of Nobil- Nobility Part 1 status, we do not. Okay. Rich nobles of Avalon often travel with wagons like this. Iron-clad mammoths of thick oak, walls adorned with runes meant to ward against weirdness. Yet all this arcane protection did nothing to save the wagon from a broken axle. Two men-at-arms and a coachman now try to repair it, but the wagon's sheer size and weight make it almost impossible. So you've got choices. You can either spend two energy to help them repair the axle. It requires one character to have at least one practicality. Yeah. Or you can spend one energy to forcefully barge into the wagon, which requires one aggression. It says the escort is busy repairing the wagon and the door doesn't look locked. If you wait for the right moment, you can get in. You can also, for a cost of no energy, ask them where they are going and what's inside. Or, if you are Girdwin, you can ask them why they fly the banners of a dead kingdom. Okay. So there is a Girdwin-only option there. Well, I think I've got to do that, haven't I? Um, There's no energy. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll, I'll, I'll politely ask them why they're flying the banners of a dead kingdom. One thing about the rune cart immediately catches your attention. A tattered flag depicting two golden balls on a green background. Even after all these years, you'd recognise this coat of arms anywhere. You fought your first battles in its shadows. You've bled and nearly died for it. Now, excitement mixed with anxiety washes over you as you see it again. The banner of the lost kingdom of Lothian, a land of Claudine the Unknighted. You ask the men-at-arms about the meaning of the banner. One is excited enough to tell you the Lothian shall rise again soon. The other immediately silences him. Could it be a Lothian noble waits inside the wagon? That old fat King Loth who spent so many years straining the hospitality of the four maidens' nobles, his snake of a wife, or maybe, you shudder, the Dolores twins themselves? If you don't have the rumours and hearsay part one status, which we do not, Girdwin loses one terror and gains one energy. Ooh. Nice. Yeah. Then gain the rumours and hearsay part one status. So okay. basically you can't do it again. Mm. Okay. So so the Lothian king and, and the daughters were not particularly high in my esteem. So um All right. gathering from that. Rumours and hearsay part one. Okay. Well so, cool. You gained an energy. I was gonna suggest offering to help. We might yeah, well, that. Right, and then exploration ends. Mm. So we go out of the exploration, and if you want to, you two yeah. can do that again. Approach the broken rune wagon, and we go to verse seven, and then we've got 
another option if you yeah. wanted to. I guess it depends on how much we're role playing and what kind of party alignment we have. You know, whether we're good guys or bad guys. And well, that that's one of the great mm-hmm. things with this, and certainly yeah. from my experience. And we'll talk about this after we finish tonight, yeah. because both me and Rob have played through the entire okay. Fall of Avalon campaign. You have choices. You have mm. major decisions and moral turning points mm. in the campaign about which way you want to go. Um, and we'll have a chat later on about which way you went. But we've, all, <laughs> we, we, we've already seen in a, in a small way how the, 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 the storyline splits depending on choices yeah. you make. Yeah, because mm. you know, this afternoon me and Pete were best friends with the Windmill people. Now... They, not, still in, not, they still send us a Christmas card. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we didn't intentionally hurt them. No. Oh, Actually. sorry. Were these your carrots? <laughs> okay. Um, so what do you want to do? Do you want to do the wagon again and choose a different thing? Or... Could do the wagon again and choose to help. Uh, that's the sort of easiest option. Isn't it? You do have the two energy to spend and you do have mm. the practicality to be able to... Yeah. But I, I'm not... I, I don't think from... Hearing that, that I feel that great towards this great, okay. this, you, so you're, this king, yeah. Yeah. king of Lothian. Um, I, okay. I feel as I'd be quite happy to leave him struggling by the side, unless unless right. I think that if I was to do that, yeah. he might change his ways and become nice king. Yeah. Uh, I don't. Or do we want to like sort of creep in to the? Um, I don't know whether it's creeping in. It's what? forcefully barge into the wagon. Right. <laughs> yeah. Less of the creeping. And more of the barging. I think we're probably. You want to find out who's into, in there. Before what would you do? Get into a fight. Let's ask. Let's ask the audience. Oh yeah. What would What would you do? Well, I'm I'm pretty low on health at the moment, and uh, you I'm are pretty tired. So, so we've yeah. got um, we've got four energy that we can no one two three energy between mm. us that we can use. Mm. So potentially we I mean, could do both. You've got five, but you don't mm. want to go below. No, one you don't want to go exhausted. Yeah. But so we mm. could. Barge our way in, see who's in there, mm. and then possibly if we decide that we're I mean, well disposed, we can Pete, try and help them and fix their. Pete could barge into the wagon himself. You don't have to. Yeah. He, you could okay. just say you're going to do that. Yeah. On your own, and you do that. Well, you bit. could let me take the could round do. for that. Then. Yeah. Michael yeah. says barging in might lead to a fight with the guards. I think it would provoke. Oh, guards. Pete says, yeah. Ask them where they're going and what's in the wagon. We've not done that yet. That is another oh, okay. option. Oh yeah, let's do that because it's yeah. a free one. Doesn't you want to do that as a party? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so as a party, you're going to ask them where they are going and what's inside. It's sort of a finesse option. Mm. Not if I'm involved. <laughs> <laughs> the guards make it clear that this is none of your business, but you do notice that they seem aggravated by the fact that the passengers of the rune wagon did not even come out to make their work easier. Exploration uh-huh. ends. So, yeah, if we make their work easier, they might be... Well, Great, I, we've got enough energy. We've got enough energy to mm. barge in and then fix mm. the wagon. But that might not be an option once we've barged in. <laughs> well, yeah. Probably won't be an option. It might not. But you've got, or you've... we could just come back in Chapter 5. Yeah. Yeah. Chapter 5 is probably the room wagons <laughs> disappeared. Yeah. yeah okay. But you've got empathy, so... Yeah. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> 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 All right, well, we'll go... let's go with your plan. All right, it kicks the door in. I'll blame you if it goes wrong. And are you going together as a party, or are you letting people yeah. do it on his own? Yeah, it was Rob's. Rob made me do it. So you're going as a party. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So you have to spend one energy. Somebody has to spend one know. energy. It sounds a bit stupid. That's to me. I'll just do it. Okay. Oh, it's just one energy. It's just yeah. one energy as a group. Right. Mm-hmm. Verse eleven. You barge into the wagon and freeze in place just two steps from its rune etched door. Before you, in the dim light coming from small slits in the walls. An inhuman shape rests on a bed of pillows and mattresses. It takes you a second to realise it is not a product of weirdness, but the result of nature's cruelty. A boy and a girl, 10 or 12 years old, joined at the torso. Dolores twins, children of Loth, infamous for their strange prophecies that all too frequently come to life. You begin to retreat when the girl notices you, spits out a gob of saliva and says in a raspy voice, The hands of stone move! Crimson water pumping through their veins. A girl stands in front of the gate as the banners of green and gold approach. She's been waiting for ten years. Oh, what bargains she had to make. What sacrifices she endured. Only mouldy bones at the bottom of a woodland river could tell the tale. But it's too late, too late. An exiled lord returns to his doom, you at his side. 
Do you think you can change anything coming on scene in the last minute of the final act? Do you really think you matter? And then both twins laugh. You stumble out of the wagon only to meet the angry faces of the driver and his helper. Gain the insolent part one status. Well, that went well. Each party member gains one terror. Oh, no, that didn't mm -hmm. go well. Right. Now, I hope you remembered all that because there's probably a lot of campaign related information yeah. in there. Well, it's a bit too cryptic, though, <laughs> I think. <laughs> yeah. Going back if to your you, earlier if, point about side quests, you'd probably be scribbling fewer. I'd be making lots point. of those. So no, mm -hmm. I think yeah. if you decipher it, you win a speedboat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Quiz show. Yeah. So, well, we can still do the helping. You can still help the guards. Do you want to do that? Yeah, yeah go on. Then. Okay, I'm so it's two energy cost. Yeah. One each. So one each. Yeah. You take the left end, I'll take the right. And yeah. we go to verse nine. Friendly chatter helps you and the men break the monotony of long, hard work. Though they try to avoid any details about their passengers or their mission, we, we do learn that the broken waystone at the top of King's Hill. Uh, sorry, at the top of King's Pass is still inactive. No one is really sure whether it will be possible to fix it and open the long lost route to the Vididia, Lothian and the southern coast. Regardless, ex exiled King Loth had already gone to the pass with most of his men, afraid someone would be a step ahead of him and would reach the lost lands of Lothian before he gets there. With the axle finally repaired, the wagon's driver repays your kindness with a good meal. His friend pushes a small cloth wrapped weird candle into your hand. With the rune wagon repaired, we won't need it much, he says. You, on the other hand. So we gain the friend of, no of nobility part one. Mm. So friend of nobility part one. Okay. One food per character. So that's three. Mm. It's not per party member, it's per character. So we gain three food. And we gain a weird candle consumable item. Just taking okay. reminder: if all copies of an item are already in play, so if if there were no weird candles left in the deck, um, then we wouldn't. And there's only two in the deck. Okay, so this was in the discard pile, so I need to take one from the deck. There isn't. There isn't oh. a discard pile. Okay, right. I don't think. I, I okay. think discard probably means return it. To the okay, deck. so all right. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Well, that worked out quite well. Then. That did. I told you I would. There you go. Interesting stories. Okay, plenty of food. Plenty of food. We can build a weird can. Loads of food. That means we can eat at the end of today, although you don't need to. You're not wounded. You, you've not got bruises from being pelted with stones. <laughs> well, I'm sensibly, I ducked. Yeah, we need to decide which of us is going to take this. We do. Yeah. You have it. Take it. There you go. Okay. Right. So, what's next? I, are, are we done? Um, I think uh, well, I'm done. I'm on one energy. Yeah, I don't want to spend any more energy. I think, okay. I think we're all done. Unless so, there's anything we can do that doesn't. Yeah, cost we can anything. look at the barrows. Can't oh, we? the mounts. Oh, we don't not look. Should we do that? The mounts. Yeah. Should we do that as a party. Go on then. Okay. We're going to search the mounds beyond the statue. Well, we, could, we could wait until we've had a sleep first before doing that. A child foraging for food among the hills notices you and runs towards the windmills to the south. The structures might be occupied. Exploration ends. Right, okay. there you go. It's basically a clue that there's people living in the windmills, but we already knew that. And we're going to end the day. Okay. So once you choose as a group to end the day, which you can decide whenever you want to, uh, we go through the end of day phase. First of all, if there are any end of day effects, we resolve them now. We don't have any. Then we rest. So if we were exhausted, we'd go up to four. If we were not exhausted, we would go back to our maximum. So for me, that's six. For you, that's seven. Six. Uh, then recover. So you may choose to pay one food. If you do not, nothing happens. But if you do pay the food, you recover one health. You gain one energy, which can, I believe, put you above your normal maximum. All right. And you lose one terror. So... I'm not going to spend the food mm. at the moment, I don't think. I think I'm okay with the health as it is. Presumably you're eating yeah, I did. one food, yeah. yeah. And that puts me on one higher than my normal. Than your normal, yeah. yeah. Mm. Uh, I'm not going to. Okay. We then suffer from the weirdness if we were in a weirdness place. 
Um, we then advance our character by spending experience. Now, mm -hmm. we're unlikely to see that during this video, but I will briefly explain it at the end. You can then modify your decks. I'll explain that at the end as well. We can't do that. And then, if we were in a location with a particular icon, we can have a vision. Ooh. So, this happens at the end of the day, and it's this icon here. So, because we are in a location with that icon, we can have a vision. The visions are dependent on the location, and the vision for location 102 is... In your dream, you travel through a strange, unknown land, seeking shelter from clouds of weirdness in the shadow of four-dweller statues, similar to the one in whose presence you now sleep. To push back the swirling, opalescent doom that floods from all directions, you must give these silent watchers everything you have. Your meagre supplies of food, your magic trinkets, and sometimes even your own blood. What a tortuous way to travel. Regardless of your efforts, the statues are always hungry for more. And, as you grow weaker, you realise with horror that there's only one possible ending. You wake from this nightmare exhausted, but also relieved it was only a dream. For now, we gain the Faint Notion Part 1 status. And I will ask people watching in the chat, can you remember what the Faint Notion Part 1 status allows us to do? Let's see if anybody's been paying attention. 10 gaming rules points if you are. <laughs> right, we now start the next day. So the next day starts with the start of day phase. One, we resolve the start of day effects. We have none. Two, we remove one hourglass from each card. So this hourglass disappears. We can go back there and steal more of their carrots. Huzzah! Or, I wonder if we can now go back there and speak to them. We could, couldn't we? No, we're not going to because we want to go that way. But Food. I think now mm. we can. Any locations that do not have a waystone, flip to the other side. Yeah. We activate guardians. Now, guardians, we might not see tonight, but these are enemy creatures that will appear and they will move around the map chasing us. Well, they're, they're not chasing us. They move randomly based on the roll of a dice. Uh, we then clear the active events area. So if there was an active event, it would now disappear, except this one is a specific quest. It's got a padlock on, so we do not clear that one. And then Pete, part two. Chapter one, part two. Chapter one, part two. Uh, night guests. As you make camp, you notice strange shapes lurking in the dark at the edge of your vision. In the late evening silence, their inhuman whispers reach your ears, making your skin crawl, even though you can only make out single words. The sword of old cradle ruined ones the passage east finally you can't take it anymore you grab a flaming branch from the campfire and swing at them sending sparks into the starry night above the shapes slither back into the darkness though you are confident they will return soon it's best to hurry each character loses one health and gains a terror Ooh. Okay. Just thinking about the order in which things happen, because mm -hmm. we ate the food and gained the health. We did. But should that have happened after this or before? No, this is a start of day, even though thematically oh, okay. this yeah. reads like it's okay. during the night. Yeah. That isn't a permanent card. It doesn't stay in play. Oh, so it just goes, yeah. just goes, put it on the bottom of the deck. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yep. Uh, Kit says, should 104 have been flipped? Yes, you do that at the start of the day. So that's the important thing, is the, 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 the weird candle burns for the day and it expires at the start of the next day. But nobody in the chat has remembered what that status was. Well, Kit says she's trying not to because she's got the game set up downstairs and doesn't want the spoilers. <laughs> but Faint Notion 1, if we had that, it allows me, because I've got two spirituality, to analyse the magic from the from the dead men here oh yes mm. Mm. so that's what i'm going to do we are now during the day yep so i'm i'm totally doing that i'm going to do it on my own i'm going to get up early i'm going to have me wheat to bits um other breakfast cereals are available and i am going to study the magic aura of the statue so it's going to cost me one energy i have to have two spirituality and we have to have the faint notion part one status check right 
As you touch the strangely warm surface of the statue, you feel unsettling energy seeping into your veins. I've changed my mind. I'm not going to do it. There is plenty of magic here, but it is so strange it would probably take Merlin himself to untangle it. Unfortunately, the most famed wizard of the homelands was lost with the rest of Arthur's court, and the only beings who could rival him, the elder hags of Ven uh, Venedia, are not someone you'd ask for help. If you don't have the Strange Lessons Part 1 status, I do not, gain one magic. You're going to like this. Each character gains one experience point. Oh, so an experience point. But we all work together at that point. It, it, it's each character rather okay. than each right. party member. Okay. Um, and I gain the Strange Lessons Part 1 status. In other words, I can't do it again. A lot of these statuses are very much, if you don't have something, get a bonus and then get the status. Yeah. Um, just to stop you doing it again. So Strange Lessons Part 1. We've got our first experience point. Excellent. Yeah. Um, exploration ends. Right, I'm happy. I've done the thing. But... No, no, that's fine. Yeah, there's, there's no need to come back here later. That is it. That is done. What do we want to do today? I think we should head east. Do you not want to just pop over here and do the thing? Or the look at the gem? I mean, or, we've, we've or, got or a weird or... candle. We could, but it seems like a high price to pay, but... Is it worth it? You know, it's up to you. It's I'm your... spending about three, three energy and I'm using a weird candle. It's your and... special thing. Yeah. It would be one energy to get there. Yeah. It would then be uh, 104. It would be one energy to do the inspecting mm -hmm. and then it would be one energy to get back. Yeah. And lose the weird candle. And we'd lose the weird candle. But I don't think we need the weird candle for anything else. And I can okay. always make more. Right. It's up to you. When we, we, we can use a weird candle to get we, through we this can, way. We can actually create a waystone here. We've okay. got enough stuff to yeah, be able right. to create a waystone. Well, okay then. It's yeah. all those you insects. persuaded me. It's all those insects covered in bits of minerals. Yeah. Gonna do it? Yeah, let's do it. Okay, so you discard the weird candle. Yeah. We flip that back over. Okay. You then spend one energy to move. Yeah. There is no immediate effect, instant ability effect moving in no. there. You explore. Yeah. We read this. You yeah. choose that option, which is one energy. Yeah. To inspect the glittering unearthed roots requires Osbert. Yeah. Verse two. If you have the weird weird harvest part one status. Nope. No. Right. When the roots of these trees were exposed, whether as a result of natural phenomenon or magic, precious minerals previously buried came to the surface. Since then, the travellers passing through the footpath have plucked most easy have plucked the most easy to reach stones, but you're certain that much more can be found in the dark, tight recesses between the roots. Choose one. You can send Clyfar to fetch some stones. Clyfar, is he like Who, my sidekick or something? Who's Clyfar? <laughs> it says he's obviously smart for a pet, ah, but not oh, right. smart enough to tell a gem from a piece of coloured. Do you have a pet? Not that have I, we missed some? I mean, I do have like a like a hamster or something like that on the end of my staff. Well, there you go then. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's it might, might, might be in your background story. Yeah. It okay. might be in your background story, uh, but apparently you've got. Uh, yeah, it's like a stoat. You've, you've got a stoat as a stoat, pet. Stoat, okay. Yeah. Great. Co-op guild is in the chat. Thank you very much for joining okay. in. Yeah, I didn't notice that. No. Yeah. So, do do you know if Osbert has a pet? Apparently, he does. So he's deviously smart for a pet, but not mm. smart enough smart enough to tell a gem from a piece of coloured glass or gold mm. from pyrite. Mm. So if you do that, we mm. read Book of Secrets verse 219. Mm. Alternatively, you could push yourself under the roots. Mm. You're just small enough to squeeze between the gnarly trees and look for valuables yourself. But something at the back of your mind screams that it might not be the best idea. Yeah, nothing could possibly go wrong. Go to the Book of Secrets 231 or change your mind and do nothing. So they go to different books of secrets. They do. Luke's in the chat as well. Hi, Luke. Thank you for popping in. Well, I've just you, got a picture of a dwarf stuck in a hole with his <laughs> legs sticking out, like Winnie the Pooh. We're sat here <laughs> at the end of the day thinking, where's Osbert gone? Why has he, he not come back? 
Uh, well, I don't know. I'll just say shiny stuff. I'm going to throw caution to the wind, despite the fact that I'm a cautious character, and I'm going to go down the, the hole myself. You're going to go down the hole yourself. So we read the Book of Secrets, verse two, three, one. So the Book of Secrets is actually in the back of this book. Um, it starts here. Yeah, Book of Secrets, and there are over a thousand entries in the Book of Secrets. It's just it's just ginormous. Right, we are reading Book of Secrets, verse. Two, three, one. Maybe he's just got a gem obsession and, you know, he can't help himself when it comes to gems. The gaps between the roots are not large enough for any regular sized explorer, but they will do fine for you. As soon as you squeeze into their labyrinth thicket, you begin to notice clumps of clay and earth still attached to them. A faint glint catches your eye and you pluck out a large sunstone from a mass of dirt. With a wide grin, you begin to look for more pocketing various small stones, and you only stop when something wet begins to dribble down your neck. Surprised, you look up only to face an open maw gaping between the roots at the bottom of the trunk. Suddenly, the tree begins to move, its maw descending towards you and the roots pulling tighter like bars of a wooden cage. In a panic, you try to squeeze out of the trap and eventually manage to escape, panicked and a bit bruised. Yeah. Unwilling to risk another go, you pocket your meagre findings and walk away. But now you can't help but feel uneasy walking between these trees. Looking at them, you no longer see a forest with exposed roots. Instead, it looks like a herd of slow, methodical predators, slowly making their way through the island on their countless thin legs. You gain two wealth. Right. You gain one terror. Okay. And you gain the weird harvest part one. Okay. Which means you can't do it again. Yeah. Well, that's not so bad. It's I mean, so bad. They like. Ents or corrupted ents or something. Looks like it. Mm. Right. And then are you going to spend one energy to come back? Uh, yes. Don't think, unless we want to spend to gain wealth, but two energy it's to gain two one. two energy to gain one wealth. But I'm not going to do that because I won't be going to do anything else. Yeah. Mm. Okay. So what are we going to do? Are we going to light this, activate this waystone here, or are we going to move to here first? I'd suggest we move there first because we yeah. can. Yeah. We and then this will become, this, this card will appear. Yeah. And then we'll be able to see what this card looks like. The weirdness side might be interesting for yeah. some reason. That works for me. Yeah. So to move as a party from here to here will cost us three energy. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, do we want to spend some so that... So if I if I spend one and Pete, mm. you spend two, Okay. you give Osbert a piggyback. Oh, thanks. We all move to here. Now here there is... We're going to have a green encounter. And because we moved here as a party... We are going to encounter this as a party. Okay. So you're actually going to see an encounter, a three character encounter. Mm. Um, but we do put two hourglasses on here, so it's not going to trigger again. Okay. Yeah. So we move to this location. Cue combat music. Well, it's a green encounter. And because this is our chapter one, it is our first encounter. So this is a fixed card. This will disappear after this. It will be removed from the game. And the card is a large weird bat. Let's just zoom in. Oh, wrong button. Let's zoom in on this. Definitely pressing all of the wrong buttons today. Weird bat or weird? Weird, weird rat. Oh. So this is a combat encounter. You can tell it's a combat encounter because of what's printed on the card. I will just very quickly show you a diplomacy encounter. This is a diplomacy encounter. You see that there's things on the left hand side. That means it's a diplomacy encounter. But this one here, this is a combat encounter. So what's going to happen is we are going to go through the combat sequence. But our objective is to get five damage on the creature. Now damage is represented by red cubes. And once we've got five on there, as immediately, as soon as we get five on there, then it's going to end and we win the combat and we gain one loot. Now, you don't have to fight these things to the death. At any point, any of us could escape from the combat. Um, if we do escape from the combat, I believe we get the opportunity attack when we escape. I think that's right. I think that's right yeah. And if we all escape, then the combat is over. Now, you need to look very, very carefully at these because what you don't want to do, especially at the start of the campaign, is get stuck into a fight where you're constantly taking damage and you've no way of defeating it. 
Now, this is a relatively easy monster, but I'm just giving you a word of warning. This is true in the original campaign. I don't know how true it is in this campaign. But certainly when we started playing it, we were fighting these monsters, just assuming it worked like any other game where you fight the monsters and, you know, your objective is to defeat them. And the problem with that is we had a battle with some rabid uh, hare or rabbit or something like that. We ended up taking like two or three damage in our first ever combat and we were low on energy and it, yeah, it backfired. Just be very careful. Just, just think. You do not have to defeat these monsters. Running away is an option. However, we probably don't want to run away at this stage because I think we're going to be able and to do this. And the fact of turning over the card when we move into the area means that we are in combat. We are in combat. Right. So the way that combat works is combat is played in a series of turns. And there is a combat card, which is here. Now, when you are learning the game, make sure you go through this very carefully because if you don't go through this exactly you will miss an important step i'm going to go through it now the first thing is each player has a deck of combat cards now when you start the campaign this is your starting deck of combat cards it will be 10 cards they have your character's name at the top and they all have a number with b b means that they are your basic cards this is what you start with at the start of each combat Every, play, every character who is involved in the combat is going to shuffle their cards and is going to draw three. Then what happens is you may mulligan. Now, the mulligans in this game work that if you decide that you don't like the cards in your hand, you can discard them or just set them to one side and you draw one fewer card. So I drew three. I don't like those, I can set them aside, I can draw two. If I don't like those, I can set those aside and I can draw one. Once you're down to one, you can't mulligan anymore. And then what happens is all of the cards that you set aside get shuffled into your deck. And once you know the game, you will start mulliganing more, especially when you start adding more powerful cards into your deck. You might want to mulligan in order to give you a better chance of drawing those cards. So I'm not going to mulligan because I don't know this game well enough, but I don't like going down from three cards to two cards. Because knowing me, I'll probably draw two that are even worse. What about you two? I think I've got playable cards. Okay. Um, so I'm not going to mulligan. Pete? Um, mm, you have played that character a couple of times, so... I am going to mulligan. You are going to mulligan. So just, you set those three aside. Just to demonstrate. Draw two. As much as anything. But also, I don't think that's the best... Uh -huh. of starting cards this is more like it okay so then you shuffle those three into your deck okay now you might think this is a deck building game and there is a deck building element to this game but that happens in between encounters where you can spend experience points buy new cards upgrade this deck but when you are in an encounter this deck of cards is your deck once you have run out of cards that's it so you gotta this is a resource that you are gonna have to be very very careful with right we then need to check the enemy traits. So certain enemies will have traits which are printed on them. And this one basically says at the end of this encounter, we're going to remove this card from the game permanently. But if they have other traits, they will be listed there. Right. The next thing we do is we choose the active character. So in each turn, all of us is going to get to act once. The order in which we act is up to us. And we're going to use these. Can you pass us another white hourglass? We're going to use these white hourglasses, and when you choose to act, you put the hourglass on there. So let's say I go first, I do my thing, I put the hourglass on, I will play one or more cards to the sequence, and then the enemy will respond. The enemy will, will attack me back. Then, because you two haven't acted, one of you two will act, so let's say Pete goes. Pete will then play cards to the same sequence. We are all going to be adding cards to the same sequence. Then the enemy will attack Pete. Then Rob will go. Rob will add cards to the sequence. And then the enemy will attack Rob. That is the end of the first turn. Assuming the enemy isn't dead by that point, we then remove the hourglasses. Everybody discards down so that they have three cards in hand. So you can't have more than three at the end of a turn. You then draw one new card. And then we go into the next turn. 
Now, in the next turn, we can take actions in whatever order we want. So, in the first turn, I went first, then Pete, then Rob. In the second turn, Rob could go first. You do not have to keep going. So, don't think that you have to keep using the same turn sequence. And this is really important. When we played this as a two-player game, it was actually quite difficult for us to get out of the mindset of, right, it's my go, then it's your go, then it's my go, then it's your go. It's not that. It's not that at all. It's individual turns, and in each turn, both characters act, but they can act in whatever order they want to. And that's important for when you're building up combos in this line, because it might be that I go last in a particular turn, and I put a card down and then realise, oh, wait a minute, I've got an amazing card that combos with the one I've just played, so can I go first in the next turn? Okay? And I think a lot of the videos that have already gone up about this game are people playing it solo, and I'm really glad it's why that I've agreed to do a three-player game tonight, or why I wanted to do a three-player game tonight, because I believe this part of the game isn't shown up enough in a lot of other people's videos, but we're going to show you how it plays tonight, because it's actually a really interesting part of the game mm. in how it works between the characters, and you can get combos of each other's cards. Right. So the next thing is we pick an active character. Who wants to go first? Based on past experience, I think I probably shouldn't go first because okay. can, the encounter could end before it gets to my turn. Is that right? So yeah, that should be there, should it? <laughs> so um, and I'm on low health, so okay. I would like to go last. If I yeah. Like, yeah, in the hope that we kill it before yeah. it's to yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. Are you in a position that you think you could go first? I can. Michael's going to play two-handed. Yeah, good, Michael. And uh, I assume if you're playing it two-handed solo, you are going to be going around together as a party and playing together. I think that's probably the easiest way. I wouldn't be able to handle two different characters doing two different things completely. But you can do that. Okay, well, if I if I attack it, I can gain. I will gain a card, and then I'll be able to do one damage or two damage if I put uh, if I use magic um, or I could use the warp star you could use the, the warp star to gain um, the magic bonus without paying magic yeah. so and that will go. flip the card over yes. and when you flip a card over it will flip back at the end of the encounter oh I see oh, okay so it's not gone forever nope so that's two damage um are you going to go first? I'm, I'm, I'm trying to persuade you to go first because okay. I, I've not got. I would take two damage if I went first, okay. and I'm already down two health. Right. Well, I think I'm going to be taking hits. You I might be taking two damage, but but I'm on. Four, I'm you're on seven. Okay, let's do that. So you're going to go first. So yeah. the way that this works is, you either don't play any cards whatsoever on your turn, at which point you get the opportunity attack on you. So you do not have to play cards if you don't want to. But if you do play cards, your first card, and I'll 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 emphasize this in bold, can be anything. So let's just have a look at the card itself. And Pete, if you want to play a card on there, what you're doing is you're playing cards to the right hand side. And Pete is going to play this card. Now the reason why I'm saying that your first card can be absolutely anything is one of the things that you're trying to do is you're trying to match up these keys because the more of these keys that you match up the better it's going to be but your first card does not have to match any of the keys why would you want to play a card if it didn't match any of the keys because all the cards have a special ability and they also have keys for the next card so sometimes you will want to play a card even though it's not going to do anything here because what's here is actually really good but peter has played this card and what we do is we now look at the keys. Now, you notice this key is the aggression symbol. This is the courage symbol. And this is the practicality symbol. And if there is one icon, which there is for that, that and that, you will get to do the connected key if your character has that attribute. Now, some of them, you may see this later, will have two icons. That means you will only get to do, you will, you will only get to activate the key if you have two aggression. But as it is, that doesn't match. So there's nothing there. This does match. So do you have one courage? I do. You do. So this ability here is Pete gets to draw a card. So Pete's going to draw a card off the top of his deck. 
this practicality key, there's no link there. Now this one, this is a special key. This is magic. And that means that you have to spend a magic in order to get this bonus. Do you want to do that or are you happy? I'm choosing not He's to. choosing not to. Then at the bottom, this is a free key. This always connects and you always get the bonus. But Pete's played a card with no bonus, which is good because the actual bonus would be time zero. So even if, let's say I'd have gone first and I'd have played, or have you got a card with a thing on the bottom? Just to show it as an example. So if Peter had played this, then it wouldn't have actually got him any cubes because it says time zero. Okay, so Pete's played that card and all that has allowed him to do is draw a card because of this. But the card now has this ability. It says place one charge on this card. That icon there means when you play this card, you do that. So we're going to put one charge on the card. And it says you can pay one charge off this card that the next, and that's your special symbol. for. So some of Pete's cards has that icon on. The next like crossbow card that he plays doesn't need to gain the lightning bolt bonus. Now, the lightning bolt bonus is important because I've mentioned that you're, you can play one card. You can always play one card. If you wanted to play more than one card on your turn, you would have to connect that icon in order to play a second card and a third card and a fourth card and whatever. Pete doesn't need to do that. If he uses this charge, it allows him to play a crossbow card onto here that doesn't need to connect to that lightning bolt bonus action. And is that what you're going to do? Yes. Okay. Shoot it. So he's going to put that there. Now, normally, if this weren't here, he would not be able to do that because this is his second card and it doesn't have a lightning bolt connector on it. So he wouldn't be able to play this as his second card. But if he uses that charge, he can play that. It has that icon. He plays it here. OK, so this is a magic key. Pete can do that if he pays one magic. But if you remember earlier on, Pete found this staff, the warped staff, and that means that during an encounter, he can flip this card over, gain one terror to gain the magic bonus without having to pay the magic. Now, Pete is already on I'm two looking, terror. I'm looking a bit terrified already. Mm -hmm. but what do you think? We are going to need some magic, though, aren't we, for the way he shines? We do need, we've got one spare magic at the moment, mm -hmm. and I don't really feel like burning it up just yet. So, yeah, in for a penny. I'm going to. You're going to do it? Yeah. I'm okay, going to use so he's going to gain a terror. Now, terror, if we just have a quick look at my player board, uh, terror for me does not have any negative effect on me until I get to seven. I get to seven, I am going insane. And at that point, you take one of these cards, and it's got lots of rules on there for what happens when you're going insane. So we might see we might see that later on. We might well see that. We might see that with Pete because Pete <laughs> goes insane when he gets to five. And I'm on three. And he's on three already. Okay. Okay. So let's go back to the cards. We've we've matched that key, so we put a cube on it. Then we have the free key down here. We put one on it. Now we have a special ability on this card. This is the enemy response. So when the enemy responds, all characters prevent two damage and if the enemy response would remove cubes we lose one cube less your turn pete you can play another card if you want to but you're not going to no. so pete's not going to play another card which means the enemy now responds and the enemy responds based on how many cubes it's got and one thing that i really like about this game is all of the enemies respond in different ways depending on how many cubes you've got on them this is a very simple little monster if it only has zero to two cubes on it, it will do two damage. If it's got three or four cubes on it, it deals one damage because it's getting weaker. So it's going to deal two damage to Pete, but he prevents two of that damage. So he doesn't take any damage whatsoever. OK, and that's Pete's turn done. So now it is either me or Rob. Pete can't take another turn because he's got an hourglass on. And we're now looking at connecting to these. Ah. Yeah, see, what he's left us not very good cards, because that, oh, that is a double aggression symbol. That is a double courage symbol. That is one practicality. Oh. Yeah, no, it's fine. It's fine. That's, that's how it is. 
Um, have you got any cubes at the bottom? Though? I don't have any cards that would be... Well, I've only got one possibility, which is if I play two cards and cover over that and then play another one. Yeah. Um, I do have a card that I can use to prevent damage to me. I mean, that's good. I, um, that's I can't do much. <laughs> yeah, my cards, I probably should have mulliganed. Okay. These are... I mean, I've got my poisonous candle, which is awesome, but the game's going to be over by the time... I, I light a candle, and when it when it runs out, it deals three damage to the enemy. Well, mm. the game, it's going to be over by then. Okay, shall, shall I go then? I yeah, if you, if you want to go next, because I should I, be okay. I don't think I can do very much. Okay, so mm. what you're going to play is your first card. Okay, so I'm going to play this one. Mm -hmm. um, so that has a connecting key. Well, you don't you need don't a connecting need key yeah. on your first card. Okay. Do you have two courage? No. So no cube is added. Yeah. So this is a this is a good example of a first card that isn't going to do anything. Yeah. But distraction. The enemy mm. response. If you've gained at least two of this card's bonuses, which I haven't. You haven't. Yeah. During the last activation, then you would prevent one damage. And after the enemy response, this card disappears. Mm -hmm. Okay. So none of that is really any use. None of that is any use, but were you playing right. that in order to set up another card? Exactly. Right. Um, although this isn't greatly useful. It does do one, one damage. Okay. So I think because I've got the one courage. Because you have one courage. I do you get deal damage. Yeah. Okay. So three. And this card says... Um, the enemy responds, if Osbert would lose health, he may discard a card from the top of his deck to lose one health less. This is yeah. perfect. Yeah. Well played. So if you're done playing cards. Yeah. Uh oh no, hang on a minute, hang on a minute. This is your second card. Yes. You can only play your second card if you have uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. It would have been good play. Right. I can play uh one, but it's not so good. Uh oh no, no, it might it might work out. Um so I could play this one, which connects. Three, zero. Oh, zero. No, I'm. I'm. So I'd have to leave it on that then, uh, um, or rethink things. Uh, yeah. Sorry. So the advantage of playing that card is yep. that you have played a card because yep. if you don't play a card, yeah, the opportunity kicks in. Now the opportunity against the large weird uh, weird rat mm -hmm. is you take one unpreventable damage, you draw a card. But then we lose the last card of the sequence. Now that, that might be something you want to do. Yeah, I'm wondering if I can do it any other way. Um, I don't think so because of the the way this card is mm -hmm. set up. I don't think any of my cards will actually work. So did you want to play a card to avoid the opportunity? So that isn't there, is it? No. Because to be honest, mm -hmm. the yeah the opportunity is one damage, whereas. <laughs> <laughs> if you play a card and don't add any cubes, you're going to take two damage. So okay, uh, one last possibility. Yeah. Sorry. So um, this is my any card. It doesn't matter. Yeah. But then it says when you play it, discard this discard card. Card and then up and to then two up more. to two more. So I could discard those. And that would wipe that one, and then maybe that one and that one. So I want to wipe that one because it's not helping. Yeah. To me, to this one's also not helping me. Yeah. So I'll get rid of that one as well. Yep. And then I'll play the other card that I was going to play. Ah, right. Which, uh, which would match to that. Which gives me a... Well, it gives me a damage. You can't play... Ah, so you'd have to leave that one in. I'd have to leave that one in. Because that is a is a zero. Okay. okay. Well, so right. is, there a, is that a damage up there? Yeah, it is. Courage? But I don't have a... I don't have a... I don't have a... It would be a second bolt. card. But if you get rid of those two, when you put that one down there, there's but a cube... There's there. no lightning bolt. But there's... Oh, there's, there's, there's no there's lightning bolt. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Follow right. ah. So... I think I would have to do that. I'd have to leave that there. So I need to get rid of this. Yeah. Well, this one gets destroyed automatically. I need to yep. get rid of that one as yep. my one. And then you can play a thing on there. And play a thing on there. And would that do it? That deals it. Um, if you've got magic. If I've got magic. I'll or have to spend or my, two courage. I don't have two courage. But if I spend my magic, which we do have one spare of, um, and that saves me from the damage, that, that ability as well. So, so if I spend my one magic... If you gained at least two of this card's bonuses, which you uh, did, you would have gained that one and that one. Yeah. Then then you uh, prevent three of the damage. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So is that what we're doing? 
I think that's well, that's the only option. I think or the best option I've got. Or just not play any cards and just take one damage. Yeah. Um, which giving them on two hit points is not great, but um, and and this does advance our position because it puts another cube on. Yeah. So I would I would I would say do it that way. Okay. And play the magic. So yeah, but... you're going to play that one first. Yeah. Which does nothing. Yeah. But when you play it. Yeah. This card goes. Yeah. And then you can do it up to twice more. Yeah. So you're getting rid of that one. Yeah. Then your second card is this one, which yeah. you are allowed to play because you're connecting that. Yeah. And then we go down the keys, and you're going to have to spend a magic yeah. to do that. That's so the Rob's spending a magic. We've got a third one on there. And then you're not going to play any more. No. And then the enemy response, and because you've gained at least two of this card's bonuses, mm -hmm. you prevent three damage. So you're only taking one damage because there's three cubes on it. Yeah. But you prevent it, and then yeah. after the enemy response, like that destroyed. card goes as well. Yeah. Wow. Those go on our discard pass. They do. Now that yeah. is a very good example of how the combat in this game works. It is very much like a puzzle, and when you've got multiple characters involved, it gets a lot more interesting. So. <laughs> okay. My go. It has to be my go next, and. I mean, at least there's three cubes on it, so mm -hmm. at least I'm only taking one damage. I could have actually destroyed it with this firebomb, but I don't think it's worth it. Well, that's only one damage, isn't it? Yeah, but oh, okay, five, five. five hit points, yeah. No. If it comes to it, we might need it. Mm. I don't think it. Well, I suppose I could go first next round, if necessary. But So I'm trying to work out if I can... <laughs> if I can do something here. So what have we got? We've got two aggression, two courage, two practicality. Brilliant. Mm, thanks. Mm. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play this and then I'm going to choose to escape. So any character can choose to escape from combat when it is their turn. And when you escape from combat, what happens is you suffer the opportunity, but yeah. then you will you take no further part in the combat. I believe that's how it works. I think it says at any time you can escape, proceed to phase three, uh, and after that, end the encounter. Mm -hmm. I mean, we don't end the encounter. I'm pretty sure. It's just you that I, I can escape. I'm just going to double check that in the rules. I read it earlier on, but just reading this now. Because that's the way that it worked in the original, is that some characters could actually escape out of combat and not others. Just going to double check for you that now. That's it. It's the next person up pretty well as well, if, if there is another. So, combat. Uh, escaping, right. Check readiness, enemy attack. Where is escaping? Any reason you aren't playing with open cards? We we could play with open cards, but to be honest, we're all relatively new to the game, and I think we're all just concentrating on our own cards. But yes, one, once you are really experienced with the game, you could play with open cards. The downside of that is that if you've got a strong player, like an alpha gamer at the group, they're going to basically tell the other players what to do. So I find it much easier that we don't, show each other our cards but we just all pitch in with what we can do feels much more of a cooperative game then so escaping page 22 so page 22 here we go right uh where is it a character can escape at any moment during their activation they lose one energy and they proceed to the enemy attack phase then they place the encounter card on the bottom of its deck reshuffle the combat deck and set it aside. But in a party, if an active character decides to escape from combat, they proceed to the enemy attack phase and they leave the combat, but the rest of the party remains in the encounter mm -hmm. to phase four readiness. Right, so that's what I'm going to do. I think it's going to cost me one energy, but if I don't escape, I'll take a damage. So I'm trying to work out if it is worth... I think we're gonna we're gonna destroy it next round. I, so. I think hopefully one of you two is gonna be able to kill it. Yeah. So if I escape, I don't take any damage. Yeah. Is what I'm thinking. So, so that's what I'm gonna do. 
I'm going to play this card here. Forget any of the keys, they're totally irrelevant. But I'm going to declare I escape. And it means in the enemy response step, if I'm escaping, I ignore the enemy attack. So basically, I sneak away. I don't get it. And what I've actually done is I've made the connections here yeah. much better for everybody okay. else. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'm out. That is the end of the first turn. So what happens is all players discard down to three combat cards in hand. Then you both get to draw a card. Rage to hell gun. Then, away. Yeah, then we remove the hourglasses. And now we start the next round. So who wants to go first? Um, I'm just trying to figure out if I might have a solution to the... That will result in it being destroyed. I think... Um, hmm. How's your crossbow looking, Pete? Not that great, to be honest. <laughs> um, um, I can do, I can do one damage and not get damaged. Well, that sounds good. Uh, mm. um, well, I can. Oh, no, I can. I think I can do two damage actually. Okay. Okay. Well, do you want to? Wanna... Go through it and see see what we can work out. Be better because okay. at the moment I'm relying on a random card coming out. Do that. So what are you going to play first? So I, oh, do I have the right thing though? No, I don't have any practicality. Ah. Uh, that's the that's the issue. Sorry, um, I can do one damage. I mean, if you can do one damage and then not take anything, yeah, and then Pete can come along and do the remaining one damage, then you're done. Okay. Um. um Meanwhile, I'll I'll sit in a corner and make a candle. I can't do it if you're playing either of those. I need to. Right. Can you do one damage? No, but I can draw another card. Okay. Well, that might <laughs> that might I mean, help. I can use my fire bomb. That's the other option, but that's discarded afterwards. So. Mm -hmm. Can you do one damage and use the fire bomb? Yeah, that's what I meant. Yeah. So if if it really is a desperate situation, um, but I think this is probably. You can make another one. Yeah, I could do. Yeah, it cost me two energy basically to make another one of these. Yeah. I'm out of ideas, really. I don't just don't have the cards. They haven't come out. Okay. So, fire bomb it is then. Unless you want to go to a third round and take a couple of damage from this. Not really, because I'm on that. Like yeah. Points. Okay. It doesn't bode well for the future. There's a big box full of. Nasty enemies over Big there. Big box of nasty enemies. And we're getting beaten up by, by a rat. By a this is how it starts. So you're going to play hide in shadows. Yeah. So uh, do you have one aggression? Nope. Do you have one courage? Yes. Yes. So we put a cube on it. Well done. Uh, the free key is blank. And then in the enemy response, if you would lose any health, which you're about to, yeah. you can discard a card from the top of your deck to lose one health less. So you just lose the top card of your deck, Yeah. which is fine because you've got plenty. But I'm not going to go to that stage in the round because if I do... Oh, are you going to use the firebomb? Well, I have to, otherwise Peter has to go, right? Yeah. Are you, are you going to be able to deal one damage to it based on that? I, uh, no? No, I can't. But not without... No. Okay, so firebomb. So my firebomb would basically save you from taking one hit point. Yeah. Is that worth it? Giving me lots of food. Good uh, point. It's a very yeah, good point. Good point, but can you kill it next turn? Um, with this card... Yes, I th I believe I can. In that case, guaranteed. Um, so, I, take, I take back everything I ever said about dwarves. So no to the firebomb. <laughs> if that's right with you, Peter. Yeah. 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 Okay. So no to the firebomb. So Rob, you have to discard a card or take a damage. So I'll discard this one. Discard that from the top of your deck. Pete, it's your go. Play a card or not. You yeah. probably want to. So you've got double aggression, double courage, one practicality. And a free key down here. Double courage. That sounds like a nail or something. <laughs> yeah. Have a point of double courage, please. Mm. Um, I don't think I can. I mean, if you don't play a card, you get that, which is one unpreventable damage. Draw a card, and we lose this. And if you're going to take a damage anyway then you might as well take the 
Is that something that we're happy to lose? It, it, it's not. Well, it's this. Yeah, it's, which is it, almost it's, the same as that. Yeah. Well, let's let's do that. I'll so you're you're not going to play a card. You're going to stand there. And just do nothing. I'm, I'm which, looking for a crossbow yeah, bolt and I can't find it. Which means one. you suffer the opportunity. One unpreventable damage. You draw a card. And then we discard that card. Okay. Well, I'm glad we've seen that. Because you don't often see people not playing a card. So it's good that we've done that. Right. right now I can... End of that turn. Discard down to three cards. Then draw a new one. Take the hourglasses back. Third turn of combat against a little rat. Just, just saying, the guy who ran off. <laughs> Finally, I can, I can kill it. So you want to go next? Yeah. Right, off you go. That was the card I was waiting for. I had to go all the way through the deck to get it. <laughs> so that's three damage. Powerful <laughs> bolt. And the right is dead. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, two for that and one for that, and it doesn't matter because it's now dead. So we gain the loot, which is one food, which was... we share between us. <laughs> Great. Hard work, isn't it? Don't worry. When when you get Thanks. later on in the campaign, you are fighting uh, really tough monsters. This is a very very simple first encounter, just to teach you how the combat works. And then your combat deck reshuffles. I get it. this item back as well, don't I? And you get the item back. Yes. We saved my firebomb. And I probably and don't want to. Firebomb. I probably don't want to use it. No. Too much. <laughs> I mean, you can give it to me. Well, yeah. Well, I'm, got... I'm happy to have it. Yeah, go on then. Thank you. Yeah, you you, you used it and went, oh, it's a bit scary. It's a bit scary. <laughs> I'll have that instead. Right. Now, that was just from us moving into the location. <laughs> wow. Okay. So, we get 105. Oh, yes, 105. Where is 105? 105 is there, but it's in weirdness. And it is, we don't know, but there's something there. And do we want to explore 103? I guess we do. Give me a spree. So 103, we're going to explore Stone Chorus. They say the weirdness, when left to its own devices, slowly transforms even the land itself. You know of no better proof than this place. The basalt walls of the narrow pass display warped, inhuman faces of stone, their mouths agape. The salty coastal wind carries their voices to faraway places. What strange song do they sing? We have lots and lots of choices. We can spend two energy to make an offering to the chorus. We have to pay one food or one wealth. Small sacrificed bowls sit in front of the figures. You wonder why. Another option is that we can search the woods below the chorus, which is one energy. We could spend one energy to listen to the songs of the chorus, only if there are no hourglasses on this location. There are two hourglasses on the location. We can spend one energy to sing with them. We've got a secret thing that we can't do yet. Or we could leave. There is also a location action where we could hunt. So for two energy, we gain two food and we draw and resolve a green encounter. Yeah, well, that went well last time, didn't it? Yeah, and the next one might be more dangerous. Or we've got our character actions, or yeah. we can travel. Uh, we've got we've got lots of things that we can do now. I'm doing something What's with this interesting thing here is that, sorry, Rob, right. is that there's no number on the side here. No, and we were hoping that mm. that's where we were going to go there is a the number there, which suggests that maybe this is where we're headed. In fact, Seems. yeah, so there isn't anything that way or that way. No. So maybe this is where we're heading. In which case, mm. we definitely want to... That, that's the other thing we can do. We can mm. activate that waystone. Should we do something with the stones first? Like, oh, there's a singing was one option, and yeah. then what's the other option? Or we it? can search the woods below the chorus. Yeah. We, can li uh, we can't listen to the songs of the chorus because right. yeah. there's things yeah. there. Uh, we can sing with them. Yeah. That's and we can, we can make the off, make an offering, yeah, yeah, which is going to pay one food or one wealth, mm -hmm. but it costs us two energy. Well, we've got four en energy each, so we've mm. got we've got loads of food. And we've got quite a lot of wealth as well. So we could do some of those things, couldn't we? Yeah. Mm. 
Singing how doesn't cost you, anything. How you singing, singing is one energy. How good's your singing? Well, dwarfs are legendary at singing. <laughs> <laughs> Give us a song, Gimli. <laughs> Just rhymes with grunt and gold. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to wash. exchange them for white so that we can see them a okay. bit better. And you're washing up when they're washing up. That's the yeah. uh, same song. Okay. Right. Go on then. Should we do the offering first? Yeah. Yeah, all right. Okay, who's Actually, going to spend the two energy? Well, I'll spend one. Okay. Somebody else wants to spend one. I've got three energy left, so... I'll, I'll, I'll spend one because I've got four. Okay. So me and you... No, you've got four. Have I? Yeah, yeah, but you can spend three of it. Yeah, no, you, you thought that that was three because the cube oh, is yeah. there. Yeah. The cube is actually okay. in, in okay, the plate. Okay, so I'll spend it, shall I? No, it's all right. We've done it. We've done it. But, but how are we doing it? So me and you are doing it because we've shared the cost. Mm. Um, shall... shall Rob come with us as a part. Do we yeah. want? I mean, I think it's going to be a good thing. Right. Yeah. So we probably should all three of yeah. us do it. Pay one food or one wealth. I can spend the wealth. You have to pay the food. Okay. Right. Okay. So we have given them some food. Verse five. I thought the singing might be, you know, the easy route that we didn't have to spend any money for. One chosen party member with three or less magic gains one magic. Okay. That's it. Exploration ends. No narrative, just nice and simple. That's only one of us, and it doesn't matter because we can share it between us if we need to. But You um, cannot share magic. Well, you, oh. No, magic cannot be shared between people. Oh, but that, um, who do we want to have it? I think we're going to spend it anyway. Yeah. So. Right. Yeah. Okay, that's that. Okay. Next. Um, so that was the singing. No, you, that was the offering. That, that, that was make an offering. Yeah. I think, yeah, singing, I was I would have opted to do that. Do you want to do that then? Well, let's, let's sing Let's sing to them and then let's listen. To well, yeah. ju just, just to show that you don't always have to be a party, I don't fancy doing that. So if right. you two want to go and okay. sing with them, right. one of you has to you spend the energy. spirituality. You could get some gospel chorus going. Does it, does it resonate and like crumble into an avalanche? Yeah, I, don't, I don't know. So one of you is going to have to spend one energy. You uh, can, because I've got three, so you can spend No, actually, you're right. Yeah. It's silly. Me not going with you, if the end result says you must have two spirituality, then yeah. you would fail. So I'll come with you. I'll okay. pay the energy. You're going to pay the energy. Right. If you have the Songs of Avalon Part 1 status, I we, we don't. do not. Right. As your voice joins the chorus, the faces grow silent. Your song is all wrong. They do not like it, and they do not like you. The feeling of being an unwelcome intruder spreads from your bones, and you almost feel as if your skeleton moves on its own, walking away from the choir. You wouldn't dare return without a proper song. So we have a new lead. We have to return to the chorus once we have learned a song. Okay. But nothing bad happens. Each party member gains one terror. Oh. I shouldn't have come with you. Oh. Ah. I knew it. Oh, that's Oh, I'm very, very close mind. to going insane. You are insane. very close to going insane. I can't insane. risk any more. We need That's to sort that, that out. How do we heal terror? And again, this is where I will make a note in my Google Doc, and I will say, once we've mm. got the Songs of Avalon Part 1, we need to come back here so that yeah. we know what to say. Mm. I mean, they just don't like NSYNC. It's just... <laughs> they're more of... Yeah. Because in the original, you used to rest in certain locations and you would heal terror, wouldn't you, I think? Yeah. Not now. Not I think now. it was the harm. Well, no, if, if you eat food, yeah. it's heal one hit point and lose oh, one terror. Right, right. So we need to, I need to do some of that okay. very soon. Okay. okay. And try and get our harmonising working better. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. Do we want to search the woods below the chorus? Um, depends how terrifying they're going to be. <laughs> well, maybe you don't. I'm going to, I'm just going to go and hide behind a tree and gibber myself. I'll go and search the woods. So me and you go and search the woods. Yeah. It's one energy between us. Um, I'm on three. Up you want to send it? Yeah, okay. So me and you are going to search the woods below the cup. Right. If you have Sticky Fingers Part 3. Nope. Mm. Among the shrubs just off the trail, you spot some abandoned sacks, carefully mm. camouflaged with leaves containing some provisions, tools, and a spare set of child's clothes. One of the trail rooms is arranged from the sticks next to the cart. These sets of marks are often left by the travellers to inform each other. This one says, please don't touch. 
Is it something someone has hidden for their return journey from the past? Hard to tell. There's no crime in ignoring the rune, but those who break the runes of the trail are often shunned by other travellers. Who's one? We can take the sacks, we gain two food, sorry, two wealth, one food, and sticky fingers part three. Or we can leave the sacks. Um we seem to be like a nice party at the moment, don't we? Like well, apart from stealing good. all of the carrots from the yeah, but that that wasn't intended. It's accidental. I I, I would, I'll leave it up to I you. think it's going to come back to bite us. So okay, I, I, I'm going to. So we choose we choose not to do that. Yeah. Okay. Um, are we lighting this? Okay. I mean, we don't need to light it today because this waystone is still lighting this. Yeah. So we don't need to do it today mm -hmm. if we don't want to. But we've got energy to. But use. we have energy spare. I've got one energy. I've got three, so I can spend two of it. I've got three. You've got three, so you can spend two of it. Yeah. Why don't you use your handicraft and make another item? That put me on zero. Well, no, you do it with somebody else. Oh, right, of course. So as long as you spend one of the energy, somebody else can contribute the other one. Okay. So cool. I'll help you make something. If you spend one energy, I'll spend one energy. All right. Well, sounds good to me. And if you want to make... Well, I'm thinking because the snare just gives us food. Yeah. And I don't think we need food at the moment. Okay. So I'll take the smoke bomb, which is basically, it gets us out of combat. Right. Just out of interest, is there another fire bomb in the deck? Well, yeah, maybe that's worth looking okay. for. Well, double fire bomb. Yeah. That's legal. Uh, no, there isn't. Okay. So there is only one of each item yeah. in there. Okay. Good to know. So I'll take a smoke bomb, and yep. this basically says during the encounter you can discard it to escape or avoid without triggering an enemy so attack. So avoiding is the way that you get out of diplomacy encounters. Okay. Escaping is what you do to get out of combat, okay, but right. avoiding is done as a party. Okay. We we can't individually remove ourselves from a diplomacy right. effect. And I really do hope we see a diplomacy effect tonight, because I really want to show you those rules. And if we get to the end of tonight and we haven't done one, I will create one and we'll go through it just to explain how that works. Okay, well that um, seems to be me out of actions. Shall we light the waste yeah, down? let's do it. Okay, so together we need to spend two energy. There it is. We need three, three magic. magic. So I've got two. I've got one. Okay, so that's three magic. And we need three well or food. So I'll spend a food. Spend a wealth and I'll spend two wealth. Okay. And what else are we going to spend it on? The waystone is lit. Now there are three of these waystones in the game. Uh, as soon as you have three on the map, if you want to light another one, you have to remove one from the map. So that's the limit. There is no timer like there was with the men here in the original game, but you do have a limit of three of them. Go, let's have a look at that. Okay. Wagenberg. We can relax. Oh, it heals terror. Mm. It's a nice place. Look. They've got baths and everything. Lose two terror and one more for each point of your something. Empathy. Empathy. Still, lose <laughs> two terror. <laughs> Pretty good. Yeah. Okay. So we did that. Happy with that? Yeah. You've still got one energy left. Yeah, I can't use it to move in there, though, because I'm going to get injured if I do. True. And it does take two energy to benefit from that losing. Two time. energy to relax. Yeah. <laughs> Is that for the whole party? Um Can we do it as a party? In a well, yeah, but that is lose two terror and one for each of your thing so okay. if you did it as a party you yeah. share out that loss okay. between the party right. which is not bad because i've got one empathy so we yeah. do it as a party we'd lose three and then we can share that three out yeah i guess pete probably wants more to lose more than just two doesn't he? Uh, are we, well, are we, are we going to call it a day should we call it a day and we'll feed and that will get us okay. some uh, so end of the day any end of day effects no rest if anybody's exhausted they go to four if you're not exhausted, 
go to your default maximum. Recover. Who wants to spend food? Me. I do. Yeah. <laughs> so I gain a health, I gain a bonus energy, and I lose a terror. That's much better. Anybody in the weirdness? No. Modify, uh, advance your characters by spending experience. Okay, so we all have one experience, but it costs two experience to buy a card, right? So there's all sorts of different things that you can do with your experience. I will cover this at the end of the video um, because I'm just going to double check actually that it does cost two experience. I think it's two. Uh, Presumably, you can't share that. No, experience cannot be shared between between characters. Yeah, it's page twenty. Um, experience resources. Uh, yeah, it will always be gained by all characters at the same time. So feel free to split your group. Um, yeah, I think it's in the end of day section. Actually. Yeah, end of day. Here we go. Advance your character. So page thirteen. So page 13 says, um, advancing your combat or diplomacy decks, it's two experience points for an extra card. Okay, that's one thing you can do with your experience. The other thing you can do with your experience is you can buy an attribute cube, Ooh. but the cost to buy a cube is more than one. So again, I'll go through that at the end of the video. We currently don't have enough experience to be able to advance our characters. Next. Modify our decks, we can't do that. Are we in a location with vision? No. Oh, we are. We are in a location with a vision. So we get to read vision 103. It's infuriating. Year after year, countless travellers walk by chittering in their pathetic human voices. In the meantime, you are forced to say stay silent. What stories would you tell, given the voice? What horrors and madness from eras long past would you bestow on your listeners? Eventually, you can no longer contain yourself, the eons of tragedies and triumphs itching to get out. And as the weirdness envelops you, blurring the lines between what's possible and what's not, you suddenly find a way to express everything boiling inside of you. Suddenly, you begin to sing, and your voice fills the air uh, from the tips of the four maidens to the lone waystone of the King's Pass. Your voice will shake the earth and make everyone in the nearby lands flee in fear. We have a new lead, the stone chorus learned its songs from travellers passing up and down the trail to King's Pass. If you come back to it with a song it doesn't know, it could learn something new. So yeah, we go to a Pet Shop Boys concert, learn some new songs, come back and teach it. Right, start the next day. Day three, start of day effects, none. Remove an hourglass. Flip locations that are not next to a waystone yep. to the weird side. Activate guardians. Clear the active area of quests. Uh, reveal and read a new event card. Part three. Okay. Chapter one, part three. The seekers gather. Someone visits you in the dead of night. Um, BOS verse 15. Okay. Book of secrets. Book of secrets verse, verse 15. 15. It's not a quest, so it goes under here. The cradle orders one of its constructs to heat you. No, is that not right? No, that's not right. Wrong, wrong place. <laughs> I was going to say that it doesn't make any sense. Fifteen. Fifteen. The sound of the sea gently wakes you up. The same sound that accompanied your every morning for the last several years spent in Four Maidens. It takes a moment for you to realise that you are no longer there. You are on a mountain trail near the King's Pass. At this. This is not the sound of a sea, but countless overlapping whispers that blur together into a single liquid hum that rises and falls like a tide. This realisation is enough to make you spring to your feet instantly. Crooked shapes sway in the dark around you, each horrible in its own way. They glisten with old coins that hang from them like amulets. Some pin scrolls or scraps of paper to their flesh. They carry torches, candles and anything that could light their path. King seekers. Cursed creatures obsessed with finding the way to the court of Arthur. Warped by weirdness, they spend most of their time in. You've never seen so many of them in one place. Now you realise it is them who kept haunting you in the last days of journey. They were the shadows that seemed to follow your every step. 
but why did they seek you? The wind carries your name, one of the creatures says, interrupting your thoughts. The weirdness shows glimpses of the future. We've seen you, standing in front of three monarchs of ruin, the sacred goblet filled with blood, the old crown restored, the road east open, the true king, the king, the king. Other king seekers sway in excitement, repeating the words, the true king found. You tell them to go away. You're just a traveler. The goal that pushed you onto this trail already seems impossible, not to mention seeking a route east or facing the kings of ruin, but it seems you have little to say in the matter. The king seekers keep closing their circle, ignoring your thrashing. They grab you by your arms, their long fingers digging deep into your flesh as their stench overpowers you. Finally, one of them lifts his hand and touches your forehead. You throw your head back in pain. It's almost as if white hot iron touched your skin. The king seekers immediately begin to retreat. One of us, they say, one of us, seek the king. You collapse to the ground. Gain secret card eight. And if we were in location 109, something else would happen. Which we're not. Otherwise, it says exploration ends. It wasn't exploration. It was, it was the event card. So what's secret card eight? Uh... Oh, brand of the king seeker. To some it is the highest honour, to others a grim sentence. Uh, drain a waystone, and then read as an action. As so. as a as a, an action, it doesn't cost right. any. Um, so I'm draining going. a waystone is being next to a waystone and draining it of its power. Well, we can do that one. I mean, the people in the windmill might not be. <laughs> didn't, what wasn't? Yeah, but then they did. Throw, they did throw stones at us. <laughs> <laughs> is this like something they said that only the most corrupt and evil individuals yeah something would do. like that yeah okay so we like changing our, our like outlook yeah but life. they threw stones at you yeah <laughs> go on take kill kill their wood kill, kill yeah anyway right so that is the event it is now during the day okay so what's our plan bearing in mind it, it's 10 30. we probably want to play for another half an hour we've got to go there haven't we yeah. Are we just going to go move and move and see what we get? We probably um, want to do a, a relaxing. We could do a relaxing thing there to heal you of your terror. Possibly do a bit of chilling on the way through because you're a bit yeah. scared, and we can explore it for free. Yeah, let's do that. So we're going to leave this location behind. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are we all just going to spend one energy? I think Might so. Well. We move as a group. Yeah. Yeah. So we arrive in Wagenberg. There is no effect when we arrive at this location but we can explore 105 right 105 says the last stretch of trail just before the king's pass is safe and almost free of weirdness perhaps this is why a well-armed group of mercenaries and brigands have set up their camp here with the road blocked by a circle of their armored wagons no one can go further north without their consent and without paying an exorbitant toll. If you don't have obstacles part one, we don't, go to verse one. Verse one. As you reach the wagon fort and walk up to the only gap between the wagons, you notice several archers eyeing your every move from behind oak and wood bulwarks. A scar-covered man in a leather jerkin walks out of the camp to meet you. Dozens of metal rings braided into his beard clink as he goes. You want to get to the pass? The toll is an ounce of gold per head. You gasp. This is way more than you could have expected, and certainly more than you can afford. Congratulations, you are closer to your goal. But there is a new problem to overcome. Each character gains one experience point. You know what that means? We've got two. Thank you. Discard your active quest. Oh, gone. Find and Resolve, Chapter 1, Part 6, but do not change the structure of the rest of the deck. Okay. And we gain Obstacles, Part 1. Okay. Well, this is, um, I'm going to say Wagenberg Brigands. Not Wagenberg. <laughs> Um, place this card in your active events area. A group of brigands blocks the trail up to the King's Pass with their heavy war carts and extorts outrageous tolls. Short of collecting more gold than you've seen in a year, 
Your only choice is to find a way to dislodge them from the trail. Quest. Find a way to get rid of the Wagenberg to continue your journey north. Hint. There are many hidden ways to achieve this goal. Um, Shoot me in the head. <laughs> find a way to get rid of the Wagenberg. 105. Okay. Mm. And that's where we are. Yeah, right. now we, 106 we do here. put 106 on here. 106 there. is mm. Reflected Town. Mm. Now, a couple of things that are interesting. First, this is not King's Pass. No. Second, there is no way there or mm. there or there. No. So the only way out is there. Okay. Which seems odd because i thought it was supposed to be here i wonder if this car gets oh placed. i see what you mean there is a path out north oh. but we can't go north because these are blocking the way i think you're right uh, so giving a little bit of a spoiler away in the deck there are alternative versions of some of the cards so i think rob's right i think there is a there is a 105 b right and once we have dealt with the situation we will replace this card with a new one it will lead us off north. Yeah. So somehow yeah, we've got to figure that. out how to get past these brigands. Okay, we've got some more information here. New lead. You must find another way to get past Wagenberg and reach the King's Pass to the north. So yeah, so King's Pass is there. Yeah. Mm. Important, you have just completed a major quest and started another. Tainted Grail is an open world adventure where players may pursue many side activities and alternate paths. That's what I said earlier. Depending on your choices, some chapters may take many, many hours of play. I refer back to you what I said earlier on okay. about how long Chapter 7 took us in the original <laughs> game. Yes. Uh, in the original game, Chapter 6 took us one hour. Chapter 7 took us eight weeks. <laughs> anyway, this is why, for your convenience, after most major chapters, the journey will inform you this is a good time to save your game. If you see this message, consider stopping your play session and saving... Reaching another such place may take many hours. Okay. Please note, saving the game outside of the recommended moments is also possible, but may require more steps. Right. Or require additional notes. If necessary, save at the end of any day. This is a good moment to pause. So that is surprising. I thought chapter one was going to yeah. be us getting to King's Pass. Because as far as I'm concerned, we're still in chapter one. Yeah. Hmm. But it is telling us this is a good moment to pause. And hmm. considering it is 20 to 11, yeah. I'm concerned that if we carry on, hmm. there might be a lot more. Yeah, because we could be halfway through, couldn't we? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, 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 I think we're going to stop the playthrough for tonight because there were a few other things that I wanted to mention at the end of this video. And I will add these into timestamps so that people can, can watch them. So... Let's talk about how you advance your character. Because this, I, I, I like games where you advance your character quite slowly, but those the changes that you make actually are quite important. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in on my character board, uh, and I'm going to zoom out a little bit, because I'm going to show you what you can do. So one of the things that you can do is you can spend two experience points to buy a new card. Now, whenever you buy a new card, you choose whether you want to buy combat or you want to buy diplomacy. What you then do is you go over to the big box of cards, which is somewhere over here. <laughs> right, who am I? Yeah. Right. What you do is you take your advanced card. So your advanced cards have got an A on them and their combat or their diplomacy. So let's say, because I'm not very good at combat, let's say I want to spend my two experience points and buy a new combat card. So what you do is you shuffle your advanced cards, you then draw, and I think it's three of them. Let me just double check. Where was experience points? Page 13. Uh, draw three cards. So I would draw three cards from this deck. And again, these are all cards that are unique to me because they've got my name on them. I would choose one of these cards. And that would be now be my card. That is permanently my card. These two get shuffled back into there. That 
is how you advance your deck. Now, I now have 11 cards. You can customize this deck at the end of each day by doing whatever you want with it, as long as it's 10 cards. So essentially what you do is you then go, well, this is actually a bit rubbish for me. I'm going to take that one out. So what you end up with is you end up with cards in one of three positions. You have cards that are currently in your deck, which yep. has to be at least 10. Cards which you own and have bought, which are not currently in your deck. And cards which are not in your deck. And what you do is you buy them, you put them into your pool, and then you can actually customise your deck. But essentially what you generally do yep. is you add one advanced card and get rid of a basic card. Okay. Now, the only reason why you wouldn't want to go down to the minimum of 10 cards is, remember, you don't reshuffle this deck during a combat. So if later on in the game you're having really long combats that go on for ages and you're drawing lots of cards... It could run out. It could run out. So depending on your character makeup, depending on what cards you've got, if you're a character that draws lots of extra cards, you yeah. might want a bigger deck. Mm -hmm. You might want maybe 12 or 13 cards or whatever. Yeah. Um, and you saw earlier on in this afternoon's playthrough, we got a set of armor, which when you use it, you discard cards from the top of your deck. Yeah, I've got a couple of cards. Right, there. again, you might want that. Right. Yeah. That's how that works. All clear? Yeah. The next thing that you can do with your character is you can spend experience points to increase an attribute. Now, the way that that works is it depends how many points you have in the two attributes that are connected together. So, for example, at the start of the game, I have no aggression and I have one empathy. So whether I buy one aggression or an extra empathy is going to cost me the same. Okay. And it's going to cost me three experience. So it's two plus one for every cube you currently have. Right. So for me to buy, for example, one aggression will cost me three experience points if i then choose to buy another aggression that will cost me four because it's two plus two if you don't have any cubes whatsoever in the top then your first one will cost you two so it's two experience points plus an extra one for each one that you've already got yeah right the next thing you can do is you can buy a skill so there are a whole bunch of skills included in the game these are all of my skills. You can see they're my skills because they've got they've got my name on it. And I'm just going to change the focus because it's not focusing properly. There you go. So these are all of my skills. These are all Elgin skills. These are my combat skills. And these are my diplomacy skills. And they're two-sided. Whenever you buy a skill, you choose which side you want. But then that's it. You are locked into that skill. You can't have the other side. So you need to make a very difficult decision about which skill you want yeah to buy a skill so for example if i buy this skill uh can this go in is this a i'm just having a look it's got that on it so yeah it is it is an aggression skill so this is an aggression skill so it would have to go there in order to buy it you already have to have two cubes right to buy a skill you don't have to have anything on the other side. Okay. So you can just, uh, you know, you can really just go down down one side of it. Um, so if you have an attribute raised to its maximum value, you may gain a skill of the same type. To do so, you pay experience points, and the experience points is four plus another four for each skill in that pair of opposite attributes. So that first skill that I buy is four. I could... Then, for another four experience points, buy another one. Four or eight? Sorry, that would be eight. Yes, that would be eight. Total of eight. So the both. first one would be four. Yeah. That would be eight. Right, so that's 12 to buy both of them. 12 to buy both okay. of them. Or, if I've got two cubes in there, even more. I could buy, if I can find uh, an empathy skill. I'm trying to find ones that. Is that a bird? Is it a plane? I think it's a bird. It's quite hard to see. Oh, no, it is. Yeah. So I could buy that there. And that one is going to cost me eight. Because I've already got 
a skill uh, yeah. in there. On that road. So these are kind of connected. They're, yeah. pa they're pairs mm. of attributes. So all of these skills work in very different ways, and these are all of just my skills. You've got your own unique skills, mm. uh, and what you do is you put you put a thing in there, and these skills are gonna give you all sorts of special abilities yeah. as your character gets gets more powerful. So mm. that's leveling up your character. Right now, we didn't see a diplomacy encounter tonight, no. but what I'm going to do now is I am going to show you a diplomacy encounter, and we're going to use the first blue one. So if we all pretend that we, that we are having an encounter with this, yeah. so we all draw. Okay. We'll three. just we'll just play through it as if three cards from your diplomacy deck, and we are having an encounter with. A rowdy peasant. Now, this is the biggest change from the original version of the game. If you have seen the combat tonight and you've played the original game, you will think that that's very similar. The diplomacy is actually quite different. So, first thing is, this is an affinity track, and you notice that there is an S there. That's where this little affinity marker starts. You can just use a cube if you want to. Or we've got a little affinity marker like that so that that's where we start now in the original version of the game you were trying to get it up to the green and if it went to the green the diplomacy ended or it might go down to the red and if it went down to the red it ended that's not the case this time in these new rules every diplomacy encounter has a timer the timer is shown at the top two time and that is individual player turns so we're playing a three-player game today, and if all three of us are in a party when we have this encounter, only two of us are going to get to do something, because it's going to tick down by one at the end of each player's individual activation. As soon as this goes to zero, the encounter ends, and then you gain an effect based on where it is. The green effect is generally good, the red effect is generally bad. Other than that, the rules for diplomacy are very similar, in that we will all have to take a turn. The order we take the turns in is up to us. The first card that you play can be absolutely anything, doesn't have to connect. Any other cards that you play must connect with a lightning bolt. And we are basically trying to move this up and trying to move it down. The biggest difference is that we have a new icon, which is this like Celtic symbol here. So if we look, for example, if I played this card, Instead of it being red cubes, it's now this symbol. And as well as connecting it and having to have the attribute shown on the left, what you then do is you look up this symbol here. And for this particular card, that symbol will only have an effect if it is empathy or spirituality. It has absolutely no effect if you've got caution. So if we look at Gerdwin's character, Gerdwin has no empathy no spirituality you have a caution but the caution effect does not trigger that so this is a particularly bad okay, don't rub it in bad type of encounter for you okay um so let's all have a look at our cards and decide who wants to go first um we we're, only two of us is going to have a turn and then it's going to end and ideally and I, we want to move it up twice and i can't actually do anything useful right so i'm probably going to sit out Mind you, I can't sit out, can I? Because it's uh, we, we're already committed. Like, no, like so all of us. yeah. So unlike deploy, unlike combat, you cannot individually escape from this. But ah, so this this is a question I have. With combat, you didn't have to play a card. With diplomacy, I wonder what happens if you don't play a card. I'm just going to check that in the rule book while we're here. So avoiding diplomacy is a decision the entire party makes. It moves down four spaces, and then the encounter ends immediately. Okay. If you choose to avoid it, um, but otherwise, on your turn, pick the active character. Delayed abilities, playing cards. Um, the active character may be forced to play a random card. So if they were going insane and they were panicking, it's a random card. Mm. Um, yeah, I'm not sure about that. I'll find out about that later on. Or if anybody watching this knows the rules for Kings of Ruin, what happens if you don't play a card in Diplomacy? Um, because it, it's clear for combat that you suffer the opportunity, but I'm not sure 
about diplomacy. So I'll find that out later on. But as I say, if you if you're watching this and you know, please let me know. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to play. Unless Rob, you can you can do I, this. I think I can, but if you can, then well, remember getting it up to the green is not enough. We okay. also need that to tick down to zero. Yeah. When it's on the green. Okay. So, just looking at what I've got, don't have... I've got good options. Okay. Well, do you want to go first, then? Uh, all right. Um, okay, so I think this is a good card. No, nobody's got an answer for us in the chat, so... Can I throw a fireball at him? <laughs> <laughs> so, this is your first card. Yeah. Do you have one empathy? Yes. You do. So, we resolve that effect, and that effect says that this moves up. Okay, so yeah, yeah. that moves up to the end. It's not working well, is it? There you go. Uh, do you have one spirituality? Yes. So we resolve that effect, so it moves up another one. Um, you can't move it up anymore, so there's no, no. point you doing this, no. and we don't need to do that. That doesn't do anything. Right. Did you want to play another card, or are you happy with that? I could do, but it doesn't really help. Okay. So your turn is over. We yeah. do the enemy response, which is we lose one time. Mm -hmm. So we're down to one. Yeah. And then it moves down one. Mm -hmm. And now we choose another character to take a turn. So if, if I choose to take a turn, mm -hmm. unfortunately, <sighs> folklore was great, but there's no keys on it. Yeah, I've, I'm sorry, I made a difference. No, view, it's fine, I? it's fine, because I can play one and then another. Right. So I'm going to play Flash of Insight, which actually does absolutely nothing because there are no connecting keys. But then, as my second card, I'm going to play Spark, which I'm allowed to play because I've made that connection. And because I've got a spirituality, we move it up to the green. I then say, I'm done, I'm not going to play any more cards. In the enemy response, we lose one time, it goes to zero, and it immediately ends the encounter. We don't do the move down. So what would then happen is... We would gain one wealth, we'd gain one food, and that would be it. Mm -hmm. But yeah, depending on the encounter, mm -hmm. depending on where it ends up, will depend on what you get. Now, this is a really easy one, okay? The other diplomacy encounters, certainly the one that we had earlier on this afternoon, that was a lot more difficult. Yeah. And it was a really interesting path. It started off at the bottom, mm. and it was moving down a lot. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It, it was really interesting. So these are these are initial starting ones just to get you started with it. The other thing I wanted to mention is Guardians. So in the deck of cards, you will find some of them will have an icon on. So this icon here means that it is a Guardian. Now, if you meet a Guardian, there is a standee that comes with the game, or if you've got the additional add-on miniatures pack which is this massive box filled with miniatures here uh you've got an individual miniature for each guardian so there aren't miniatures for every monster in the game but there are for the guardians uh, and that is because if you do not manage to defeat a guardian then it actually stays on the board so you leave the miniature on the board you leave the card nearby and at the start of each day, you activate the Guardian and it moves according to that. Oh, right. Now, depending on different results, I think the X means that it either doesn't move or it disappears. I didn't fully read the rules on Guardians and I know that they uh, have changed for this version of the game. But let's have a look. Guardians, see page 17. So Guardians, if you've got an X, then if the Guardian is in a location with the character, each character in the location resolves an encounter with the Guardian. So you fight it. If the Guardian is in a location with a Waystone, the Waystone is faded. Okay. Uh, and then you move the Guardian to the highest numbered connected location. So they go around draining the Waystones and then, and then moving on. Other things we didn't see tonight, and just to remind you, things that you can do, you are allowed to go into a card 
which has weirdness on it. Uh, you cannot explore it while it's covered in the weirdness, but there's two reasons why you might, why, might want to do that. First reason is when you do that, you read a secret thing in the Book of Secrets. There might be hidden things. Well, there are probably hidden things in these areas that you don't know what they are. But also you might want to move on to one because you're moving through it to get somewhere else and you just don't have the means to, to light anything on the web. What else did I want to mention? I think that might be it. We've talked about spending experience to upgrade your character. We've talked about uh, guardians. We've talked about the board. The only other thing to mention, I think, is this is literally the tip of the iceberg. This is very, very much the start of the campaign. So if you thought all we did is fight a rat and upset some family that lived in a windmill, that didn't feel very epic. I don't want to spoil too much, but this campaign progresses. Having not played it, but this is my what this is what happened in the original campaign. It starts off all very small, but as the campaign progresses and the story becomes more and more involved and more and more epic, you will be uh, getting involved in adventures which are world changing, and you will end up uh, presumably near the end of the campaign meeting the kings of ruin and fighting them. So it isn't really a spoiler because the kings of ruin miniatures are actually in the game okay so these actually come in the box there is three kings of ruin there's that one there's that one and this unfortunately the sword broke on this one which i've not fixed yet but there's this one as well um and each one of these has cards which i'll show you to afterwards but i won't show people on stream uh so yeah you're going to be fighting these at some point and they are really powerful really powerful monsters so that's it we are all done mm. um so as i say i am going to be playing through this campaign i'm going to be starting it in a couple of weeks me and vicky are going to be playing through it uh rob's back to the game he's got it you've got it coming which will be arriving at some point are you going to be playing it with the same group that you played the original one with i hope so yeah. possibly yeah, possibly. Pete's never played Tainted Grail before, so his first exposure to the game, apart from me telling you about it for the last six months, has been this afternoon. Yeah. Uh, but I suspect Pete might be borrowing my copy after I've finished with it, <laughs> and he might be borrowing the base game, which is which is over there. Um, thank you very much to everybody who's been watching us live. Um, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed it, and for anybody watching back later on, I hope this video has been useful. Um, I'm really interested to see all of the people who've watched this video who realise they've been playing a rule wrong. Uh, if you have, please let me know. Just let me know if this if this video has helped you. And as I mentioned at the start, it is a sponsored video. So a big thank you to Awaken Realms for sponsoring this video. But also a big thank you to all of my Patreon supporters that fund the channel. This afternoon, me and Pete played through the tutorial game of this, which is very good. It took us about one hour. Uh, and it's a tutorial that guides you through your yeah. first combat, your first diplomacy. It basically teaches you 75% of the games in an hour. It's really, really good tutorial. Um, that was live streamed to my patron supporters this afternoon. But if you get the game, absolutely play through that tutorial. It's worth playing. It's a nice little introductory adventure. And as I say, it only takes you about an hour. Right then, time for a cup of tea. Thanks very much to you two for joining me. Thank, Thank you, you to everybody for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.